Just a few days away from Cinco de Mayo, Saturday night. Canelo Alvarez fights at home for the first time in nearly 12 years. Tonight, we are inside Code Jalisco in Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. ProBox TV, in association with our partners, Canelo Promotions, kick off the celebration with another edition of our Wednesday Night Fights. We get things started with a six-round lightweight matchup. Guadalajara's own unbeaten Cesar Ortiz. The 18-year-old will have Chepo Reynoso in his corner. He fights Mexico City's Antonio Tony Montana Gonzalez. Then a six-rounder in the super bantamweight division featuring Oscar Hernandez, who is set to fight for the second time in his hometown. And his opponent is the 19-year-old from Mexico City, Joseph Morales. Our co-main event of the evening is an eight-rounder in the middleweight division featuring 10-0 American, San Diego, California's Lazaro Lorenzana, trained by the great Eddie Reynoso. His opponent is Mexico City's Alexis Rios, who does have the skills to trouble young fighters. And our main event is scheduled for 10 rounds in the lightweight division. Orlando, Florida's 19-year-old Jonathan Lopez, 10-0 with seven knockouts. He fights in Guadalajara for the fourth time against Mexico's own Osvaldo Nunez. Take a look at Code Jalisco. It is a huge week with Canelo Alvarez fighting at home, as I mentioned, for the first time in nearly a dozen years. So there'll be a lot of eyes watching these young prospects go to battle here on Pro Box TV tonight. Hi again, everybody. Mike Goldberg, my powerful partner, is the former world champion, Chris Algieri, former two-time world champion, the magic man, Pauli Malinaji. First and foremost, for those of you who were looking forward, as we were, to a main event between Fernando Molina and Kevin Priadahita, Unfortunately, some things occurred outside of the ring, so that fight will not happen tonight. We hope to have that matchup for you down the road right here on Pro Box TV. Now, Chris, that being said, it's still a fun night of fights with a lot of young prospects, many of them fighting at home. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and in true to form for Pro Box TV, we got a lot of tough fights, too. And we're not here to promote the likes of Canelo Alvarez. We're here to potentially have the future Canelo Alvarez on our show. So hopefully some of these young prospects have that opportunity to, to show what they got, and maybe we'll see them down the line. Well, Paulie, though, with the likes of Canelo Alvarez fighting at home on Saturday night, there's going to be a lot of eyeballs that are very important watching these kids tonight. And that's the thing. You know, when you get a chance to shine on Pro Box TV or any other network, you know, you have more eyeballs on you. But this particular week, you also have a chance to be seen in person from people that are coming from all over the world, media, uh, important boxing figures from all over the place, because Canelo Alvarez is the star in boxing and he's attracted the entire world of boxing to Guadalajara this week. So if you've got the appetizer card, so to speak, you've got an opportunity to shine in front of people that are not only are important, but may not have been paying attention to you, if not otherwise. All right, where well, our new main event is a good one. Orlando, Florida's 19-year-old Jonathan Lopez, 10-0 with seven knockouts. Chris, a young man who you've known for quite many years. Yeah, no, he's, he's a fantastic young talent. He's got a good amateur you know, background, but he actually has a very nice-looking pro style. And I think, you know, he's got the goods to be one of those guys that potentially down the line we could see in some major, major fights. He's a very high ceiling, a very fan-friendly pro style. So I'm looking forward to watching him work tonight. And if you know anything about our matchups here on Pro Box TV, you know to throw out the record, throw out 
Well, don't throw out the intangibles, but throw out what you might think is obvious about his opponent, Osvaldo Nunez, because he wants to spoil the show. Well, he's also the Mexican, right? So he's yes. showing up, and he, he's like, you know, this guy's coming into my hometown, my home country, so to speak, you know, and, and uh, you know, he's, he's going to be the star. He's going to be the A-side in my country. No way. He's got spoiler on his mind. Like we said, uh, like, uh, like you said, Goldie, don't count out the B-sides on this network because we've had plenty of winners on that side. Because we have... Not an A-B side. We have two excellent sides that will match up. And our first fight comes your way, as I mentioned, from the lightweight division and one that should be ultra entertaining. Guadalajara's unbeaten Cesar Ortiz. The 18-year-old will have Chepo Reynoso in his corner. And I, and I don't know why, but Antonio Tony Montana Gonzalez his opponent and we look forward to this one it is scheduled for six it is what we start off with tonight caesar ortiz five and oh in his young career he will turn 19 years old on may 20th five bouts six rounds he has made quick work of his five opponents finishing all of them four of five in the very first round will he be able to do that against his opponent tonight antonio tony montana gonzalez well time will tell gonzalez doesn't have a lot more inside the ring fights if you will he has eight professional bouts but he has been in there for 30 rounds so what what's the better of the two chris the, the fact that ortiz comes in gets business done and then leaves or the gonzalez has a little tape to look at and try to improve well only time will tell but i mean listen says ortiz obviously he's a fast starter he's looking to knock guys out but he's got some in front of him he's got way more experience he's been been around the block so to speak so he's going to be a nice little test for for the young cesar ortiz take a look at our tale of the tape for our first fight here on a wednesday night for you from Pro Box TV. I talked about Ortiz, just 18 years old. He will have a slight reach advantage over his opponent tonight, Antonio, I gotta say it again, guys. Antonio Tony Montana Gonzalez, scheduled for six in the lightweight division. Let's get down to Guadalajara for our official introductions. Damas y caballeros, esta es la tercera llamada. ¡Comenzamos! Y bienvenidos sean ustedes a otra noche más de boxeo que es presentada a ustedes por Pro Box TV. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to another night of prize fighting boxing. This is Wednesday Night Fights live on Pro Box TV and it's presented by, presentado ustedes por Clase y Talento, No Boxing, No Life y Canelo Promotions. Estamos en vivo desde el Domo Alcalde, desde la bella, la perla tapatía Guadalajara, Jalisco, México. Este combate está pactado a seis asaltos en la división de peso ligero. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is set for six rounds of boxing in the lightweight division. Y es sancionado ustedes por la Honorable Comisión de Box, Lucha Libre y Artes Marciales Mixtas de esta ciudad de Guadalajara. El presidente Francisco Gaitán, comisionado Efraín Espinosa, el jefe de servicios médicos, el doctor César Vázquez. El tiempo, Cristóbal Bonilla. Your three judges going this bout in ringside. Sus tres jueces. Rafael Cortés, Simón Contreras y César Flores. When the bell rings, your third man inside the ring to watch the actions. El tercero para medir las acciones, Javier Peña. Interesting first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears the blue trunks with white trim. He officially weighs in at already 135 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul. Pantalón sin color azul con blanco, con un peso de 135 libras. He stands with a record, three victories, five defeats, and one KO. Cuenta con un record de tres victorias, cinco derrotas, y una victoria por la vía del knockout. From Mexico City, de la Ciudad de México, Antonio Go. González. 
and his opponent across the ring, standing in the red corner. He wears the black trunks with white trim. He also weighs in the same 135 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina roja, vistiendo pantaloncillo color negro con blanco, y en su esquina, el reconocido entrenador Chepo Reynoso. Con un peso oficial, 135 libras. He stands with the record. A perfect one. Five victories, no defeats, and all of his victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de cinco victorias, cero derrotas, y todas sus cinco victorias por la vía del knockout. Representando al gimnasio, Julian Magdaleno, Guadalajara, Jalisco. Cesar Iván Ortiz. And now, given out the final instructions, con las indicaciones finales, su referee in turno, Javier Peña, six rounds, seis asaltos. Muchachos, quiero una pelea limpia, cuidado con las cabezas, no golpes en la nuca, no golpes en los riñones, golpes siempre arriba del cinturón y muy atentos a mis indicaciones. Choquen guantes y suerte a los dos. Six round lightweight matchup, unbeaten. 18 year old Cesar Ortiz against 23 year old. Antonio Gonzalez. Oh. Here we go. It's time to fight. Black and white trunks for Ortiz Gonzalez in the blue and white trunks. And I talked about the first round knockouts. Check this out. First three fights for Ortiz. He finished his opponent in each of those fights in two minutes and four seconds. Not once, not twice but three times. So let's see if two minutes and four seconds works against Gonzalez tonight. Yeah, Ortiz came out right away and threw a nice combination, popped the head back of, of Gonzalez. So, I mean, he's, he's being true to form in terms of being a fast starter. If he gets a 204 knockout this time, you might want to play the pick three. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's, that's a bit more than, than a coincidence. If, if he would have known that and gotten into that big lottery for a billion dollars beforehand, he, he might be, well, he might, be promoting Canelo Alvarez on Saturday. Now he's looking to start the show in style. 5-0, five, oh, five knockouts, and coming out aggressively, but Gonzalez is ready to fight. I mean, Ortiz is a, is a huge lightweight. He's 5'10", 73-inch reach, and, and he looks all of that. He's got very long arms, uses that range well, looping those, those shots up and, and around. Couldn't help but notice Gonzalez, uh, nickname uh, being Tony Montana, but I also couldn't help but notice that the, the, the ring announcer just couldn't get himself to announce him that way. <laughs> <laughs> just, and, and I couldn't, I couldn't stop, couldn't Paulie, and I couldn't stop. <laughs> Halfway through round number one, this first fight of the night, Wednesday night, right here on Pro Box TV, scheduled for six. Nice left hook there from Ortiz. You can tell he's a left hook happy a little bit. You know, he, he likes to look for that shot. And of course, you're coming from the Canelo Alvarez school. You know, you're, 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 the odds are you're going to be a, a guy who looks for that hook and has a hook to the body as well from Ortiz. Good defense, good head movement as well. Yeah, a, a little trigger happy to start, but I, I like what I'm seeing from, from the young Ortiz. I mean, he's, he's picking his spots really well. He's moving around the ring nicely. Looks like a real pro. Okay, it's 2.05 now, so I forget the lottery ticket. 50 seconds left in round number one. Goldie, you jinxed the kid. I, I did, I did. I should not have done that. He already had a hat trip, for goodness sake. Good body shot there, too. Right hand over the top and came back with a left hook right behind the elbow. Gonzalez trying to do some work with his jab. Looks to change levels. Two-inch reach advantage for Ortiz. Gonzalez looks like one of those tough, sturdy guys. I mean, this, this is a good test for Ortiz, you know, get him out of that first round, maybe get him deep into the second at least. But uh, Gonzalez is looking, he's one of those guys who's just going to lay down. Busy at the end of the round and fighting very long, much to your point earlier, Chris. Cesar Ortiz. If you get that height and reach, you might as well use it. Ortiz used it well in that round, even though he was being aggressive and a power puncher.
Ponte listo que no te manoteen. ¿Eh? Agarra ahí bien. Entra en tu ritmo, entra y sal, entra y sal. Dos, tres golpes me salvo, dos, tres golpes me salvo. Cuando puedas ahí lo remato con fuerza abajo. ¿eh? Respira profundo. Métesela. Párate y agarra aire. Typical Mexican instructions. You know, get a chance to touch him to the body. Stay in your rhythm. No surprise to hear that from the great Chepo Reynoso. Round number two. Ortiz fighting at home. He is in the black and white trunks. He is unbeaten in his young professional career. Antonio Gonzalez in the blue and white trunks. Oh. Finding a home for that jab early here in round two. Oh, good counter there. Take a little half step back. Made his opponent miss and made him pay immediately. Body. Oh, he's got some quick hands, Paul. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and I starting to close the gap more frequently here earlier on the early part of this round. Yeah, I like what he did right at the beginning of the round. He stepped to the center of the ring, took the center, controlled the center. Oh, body beautiful shot body shot. That looked like an effective. Yeah, balance. that hurt him. Yeah. He's got that elbow tuck now. Let's see if a left hook to the head comes next. But he's still throwing. Gonzalez is there to fight. Yep. Taking these big shots, coming right back. He's like 21 time at the end of this golf game. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I wonder if he earned that nickname or he just gave it to himself. I, I, who gives you that nickname? <laughs> he just gave it to himself. Especially in Mexico. <laughs> yeah. You gotta be moving a lot of weight for somebody else to give you that nickname. <laughs> and things did not end well for Tony Montana. <laughs> no. <laughs> and so far they haven't started well for Tony Montana tonight either. 90 seconds left in round number two. We should call him the Mexican Tony Matan. There you go. This is about to be the longest fight of the 18-year-old's career. I will say that about Ortiz. In between rounds, he looked very, very calm. Didn't look out of breath, looked to be in good condition. So maybe maybe these longer rounds are not a bad thing. We have to see him work more, get to see some more of that talent. And Gonzalez coming from altitude in Mexico City. I like to see uh, Ortiz shorten up those combinations a little bit, though. A little bit too much daylight for my liking in those combinations, especially for a guy with his height and uh, his range. You know, he's, he's throwing those shots a little bit loopy at times. Or when he's throwing them straight, there's just a little too much daylight in between them. Sort of falling in at times. I'm not sure it's going to really affect him or cost him tonight, but, you know, these are the little things that you want to see the young man working on. And, Paulie, you said in the open there's a lot of eyes in town with Canelo Alvarez fighting John Ryder on Saturday night. And so you want to put on a show if you're 18-year-old Cesar Ortiz. Yeah, and Gonzalez really, you know, gives you, you know, doesn't give you a lot of looks. He just gives you the same look. He's kind of stationary in front of you. So there's, 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 there's something to work with there, you know. So you want to you want to be able to, you know, attack in, in neat, organized ways to where, you know, you can be impressive. Gonzalez will give you the opportunity to be impressive, but you've got to take it. Nice combination there, but Ortiz a second ago. Gonzalez also gives you a lot of opportunity to work on things, and that's what the young Ortiz really should be looking at with this fight. And now we're going into the third round where he's never been. He can work on some of the things that he's been working on at camp. I like when the young guys get rounds. I think it's important. You know, if, you, if you've got five fights and you've only been six rounds, it's kind of good to get, get these rounds in with a tough, terrible guy like this. Gonzalez getting instructions to use both hands, move that head and, and use both hands when attacking. Here we see that, that nice combination that I spoke about earlier where it was a slip and carry, pulled, just made his opponent miss, made him reach, and then came back right away. And then we see that beautiful left hook, the one that we said looked like it had an effect on Gonzalez and on replay. You can obviously see he tucked that elbow, bent over. That was a well-timed body shot. Sometimes those shots end fights. Yeah, yeah. Gonzalez is tough. I think I know what you were referring to, Paul. <laughs> Ryan Garcia? <laughs> yeah, that might be. Yeah, that no. might be. No, not at all. Never. <laughs> Mike Goldberg, Chris Algieri, the Magic Man, Paulie Molinaggi, here on Pro Box TV. First time 
that the 18-year-old has fought into round number three. Ortiz 5-0 with five finishes. Speaking of ending fights with left hooks, you know, Canelo weekend, he's got a highlight reel of left hooks to deliver ending fights throughout his career. And the more we watch this fight, Chris, the more I know that you can illustrate the point that Paulie made earlier. Straightest place to hit somebody is a straight, straight line. And there is a little bit of loop to the punches from the 18-year-old. Yeah, he, he needs to jab more as well, kind of hide those shots. If you're, if you're coming with those big looping shots, you tend to see them coming. You can brace for impact. That's kind of what Gonzalez is doing at this point. But if you can mask the, the, the shot with the jab, get a guy blinking, get him, get him reacting to feints, and you hit him with a shot he doesn't see, oftentimes those are the ones that hurt you the most. Also, a lot of times after he's throwing punches, he's going straight back, and he gives, he's giving Gonzalez a chance to answer back to uh, respond to well. Sneaky uppercut a moment ago by Ortiz. Out there. Caught, caught Ortiz standing tall. Gonzalez is in the fight. He's in to spoil the show. Ortiz is taking some of the pop off of his punches now, just kind of placing them, throwing more combinations. You see, this is one of those things where you talk about prospects getting rounds, champ. You know, and it's one of those things where you, where you get rounds, but you also need to show that you're dominant and you're better than the opponent. I see Ortiz. Yeah, okay, he's better than Gonzalez, but he, the main reason he's winning this fight is because of activity. You know, and, and typically, the prospect is hungrier than the opponent. So the, the, winning the fight just based on activity is the most minimum thing you can do. But you also, if you're going to be a prospect that's going to get eyeballs on you and pe get people talking about you, you, you've got to show that you're way superior than these kind of opponents. And Ortiz is just, to me, just showing that he's hungrier and more active than Gonzalez. But is, is he really showing me anything that, that's going to make me say, wow, as a prospect? The good news is he's young. You know, he's not even 19 years old. But, you know, the bad news is he's got a lot to work on. Yeah, that, that, and, and we're seeing that more and more in round number three. He's starting to slap with his punches. His technique is starting to fall apart. Got hit with a couple good straight left hands just, just earlier. That left Looking hand. for that body again. But yeah, that jab a moment ago from Gonzalez. Guys popped the head of Ortiz back. Body, body. Ten seconds left in round number three. Gonzalez is not liking that body work. Not that I know anyone who does. Right. <laughs> but he continues to fire back as we get set for round four. No le hagas confianza, güey. Te quiere agarrar los volados. Provócalo y hazlo fallar. Provócalo y hazlo fallar. Te tira muy lento, muy avisado. Provócalo y hazlo fallar. A cuatro. She's a match from Ortiz. Yeah, a nice little sh short left uppercut followed by a right hand and a left hook combination uh, on the guard of uh, Gonzalez. Some of those punches got through. And then a good body shot there right on the belt line. You get to see a little bit of reaction from Gonzalez. Bit of a smack, but got in there. I'd like to see Ortiz shorten those punches up when he's that close. He doesn't really adjust the way he throws the punches at close range. He's throwing them just as wide as when he's on the outside. And it seems like he's getting a, a little wider even as these rounds go on and, and more slappy. He's not hitting with the knuckles like he was in the first round. Round number four coming to you on a Wednesday night from Cote Jalisco in Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, Pro Box TV in association with our partners Canelo Promotions. Double jab right hand to start round four from 5-0, and 18-year-old Cesar Ortiz. And I mentioned hitting with the knuckles. You can, only, you can see, he, you know, Ortiz is not really making a fist anymore like he was. And, and listen, I, I was a professional at 18 years old as well, and my hands just weren't hard yet. I just, they weren't, I wasn't mature enough to squeeze those hands, and I ended up developing a lot of hand problems very early on for that reason. Ortiz needs to be careful and really working out in the gym. Ortiz fighting at home in Guadalajara. This is the deepest he has gone in any fight. But, Paulie, if you're his trainer, there's part of you 
that is happy about this because you can tell the young man afterwards, see, that's what we've been talking about you need to work on. See, that's what you didn't do tonight. You finally have some tape and you finally have his mind and his ears are wide open because he didn't finish somebody in the first or second round. Yeah, yeah, and then, but honestly, the the things that a guy like Ortiz has to work on, I'm sure you can see that. You probably see them in the gym as well. They're not it's things that are just so subtle that you only see them in the fight. I mean, there's there's plenty to work on there. He, he's, he's a bit too squared up when he's attacking. He's, he, he goes straight back. Yeah, he throws a nice combination here, but he's also got a, a very limited guy in front of him who's, like I said earlier, is not really changing the look. And the main reason Ortiz is winning the fight is on activity. It's not that he's... You know, he's got some kind of uh, super shot selection or anything like that. He's just out punching Gonzalez, and he's winning. He's going to win the fight because he's hungrier. And, of course, as a prospect, that's the bare minimum you need to be is hungrier. And, you know, we mentioned the toughness of Gonzalez, but he has been stopped three times in his career. Yeah. Twice in the first round. So it's, it's, yeah, it is a little bit of a litmus test of that power for 5-0, and 5 knockout young fighter. He's got a guy in front of him who can be stopped and has been stopped and seems like he's going to go the distance. Mexico's a strange place, man. I mean, they, they produce so many good fighters, but then, you know, I look at somebody like Ortiz, who's only 18 years old, and say, you know, what was the rush for turn pro? You know, there's, there's, there's so much things to, to still work on. And, uh, of course, now he's a pro, he's going to have to go very, very slowly as he's moved up the ladder. And has stayed busy since turning professional back in March of last year, Paulie. Four fights in 2022. This is his second fight already in 2023. Won by first round TKO back on February 11th. Ten seconds on the clock, round number four. You know, Paul. I mean, I think it, I don't think it's that uncommon for fighters to turn pro very early on, especially make money for their families. But the difference is now we see them on TV. We never yeah. did. We never used to. So we, there, there's platforms now where a lot of these fights that we would never normally see, we get to see. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point, John. I mentioned how Ortiz had taken a little bit of the power off of his punches, and he's, he's like you said, champ, he's, he's winning on volume at this point. He's, he's taking a little bit of the power shots off, but he's throwing more and more combinations, letting his hands go, and winning on activity. It should be noted that Antonio Gonzalez, coming into this fight, has a record of three and five. But everyone he has faced, and he has faced some young fighters in their careers, undefeated, undefeated, one loss, undefeated, one loss, undefeated, undefeated. And so while young opponents have been there for Gonzalez, they have had good records. And so no surprise that Antonio Gonzalez has been taking some punches, but he remains in this fight against the 18-year-old Cesar Ortiz. Yeah, all but one had winning records. Yes. There's oftentimes you don't see guys fight anyone with a winning record in their first 10 fights, and he's only had fought guys with a winning record. Last two, 5-0, and 4-0, oh, and, oh, and his last victory was May of last year against Adrian Zarati, who was 6-1 and one coming into that fight. Ooh, nice jab to the body, right hand over the top. Kind of a no-look right hand. Good shot from Ortiz. Oh! Big left hook upstairs. Gonzalez looking to fire back. Gonzalez's game. Yep. But that's kind of the pro box way, and that's what we talked about as this fight got underway, is that Gonzalez would not be an easy out, especially the fact that he's gone 30 rounds as a professional in eight fights coming into tonight. 90 seconds. And if Ortiz were to go the dis distance tonight, he would double his, his yes. rounds in the professional ranks. He's only had six so far, and this is a six-rounder. See what I'm saying about it? He doesn't shorten his punches up when he's at close range, like right there. Everything was wide. He, you know, he closed the gap, and he's not cognizant of the fact that he got closer, and he's got to adjust the way he throws those punches. 
it makes you wonder <laughs> how many amateur fights this guy have, you know, because these are subtle things that you learn in the amateurs and in the gym. Well, I haven't seen many jabs at all, so I, I'm not sure if you have a tremendous amateur background without having jabs. I don't really see that. Marcelo Lopez and, of course, Chepo Reynoso in the corner of Cesar Ortiz. First fight of the night, scheduled for six, 30 seconds on the clock here in round five. He likes that one, two, and then the uppercut. There it is again. Headed to the sixth and final round. Story of the night has been Ortiz's combination punching has uh, gotten the numbers up there. And then a little nice combination there by, Gonz uh, by Ortiz as he gets Gonzalez going straight back. And that's why Gonzalez eats also eats the last two punches of that combination because defensively, instead of making the correct move, he goes straight back and eats the, the end of the combination as well. You never want to go straight back defensively like that, especially uh, standing high up. Especially with a guy with the reach like Ortiz. Sixth and final round. 18-year-old, 5-0, Cesar Ortiz, black and white trunks, Antonio, Tony Montana, Gonzalez in the blue and white trunks. Ooh, nice combination there from Ortiz. Definitely got the attention of Gonzalez. Ooh. Pace picking up here early in round number six. I think Ortiz might have heard me, but this fight looked like it was going to go to the distance. And Ortiz has a 100% knockout record. Maybe he wants to keep that 100% knockout record. And he's trying to go for it right now in the last round. Born for a low blow earlier. Now he's got to be careful with the back of the head, but the hands are busy here in the first minute of the sixth and final round. Best case for a young fighter like Ortiz is to go the rounds and get the stoppage in the last round. Because you get the rounds in, you keep the perfect record, you get the knockout. That would be an ideal situation here for Ortiz, but let's see if Gonzalez can last. He's got about two minutes to do so, Chris. Let's see if he is able to move to 6-0 and with six knockouts. Gonzalez just landed a nice left hook to the head of Ortiz. Ortiz getting warned once again. And a shoulder as well. About to get warned again for pushing, yeah. And some of that may be just frustration for the 18-year-old. There might be a little fatigue as well. In between rounds, Ortiz was doing something a little bit weird. He, he stood up in the corner and turned his back to the center of the ring, was looking at the post while his coach was talking to him. Looking at the corner, rather. Uh, uh, that's odd. As if he was either trying to catch his breath or wasn't feeling well. I don't know. I, 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 that looked strange to me. Maybe he was talking to somebody in the crowd? <laughs> I would save your breath for the last round there. <laughs> He had never gone past 139 of round number two. Now he's just over a minute away from going the distance for the first time in his professional career. One minute. Our first fight of the night from Cote Jalisco. The best weapon from Gonzalez all night has been just a straight jab down the middle. He's popped Ortiz's head back several times in these six rounds. Usually because Ortiz is leading with hooks to the time, body. Yeah, I was just gonna say, every time Ortiz leads with a hook to the body, he's up straight, um, he's squared. If, you, if Gonzalez just throws a left hook to the head at the same time, he would catch him lovely. Oh, the right hand upstairs with Ortiz. There he is again. 20 seconds. About to officially double the time 
that he has spent in the ring as a professional about a week or two shy of his 19th birthday. The judges should not have a difficult time scoring this fight, but it is the first time that Ortiz has not finished his opponent. It goes the full six rounds. Yeah, this was one of those fights where it was, it was tougher to watch than it was to judge. <laughs> <laughs> you're glad it's over, but it's one of those, you're not gonna have a hard time scoring. And 23-year-old Antonio Gonzalez certainly came, came in with 30 rounds to Ortiz's six. And he was not going to go away easily as he goes the distance against the 5-0 Cesar Ortiz. That is our first fight of the night. It is in the books. Up next, super bantamweight matchup scheduled for six rounds. Guadalajara's Oscar Hernandez against Mexico City's Joseph Morales. Then our co-main event of the evening, 10-0, Lazaro Lorenzana. He has finished eight of his 10 fights. He takes on Alexis Rios, who is fighting in his home of Alisco, Mexico. And then our main event, of the evening another unbeaten american in jonathan lopez 10 and 0 he faces osvaldo nunez that is our main event those fights still to come here on pro box tv take a look back at our first fight of the night ortiz and gonzalez ortiz started out strong came out throwing good combinations Throwing some heavy hands. You could see why he had five knockouts in his five fights. But as the fight wore on, Gonzalez showed to be a tough opponent. There you see a beautiful left hook to the liver that buckled over Gonzalez. But as I was saying, Gonzalez showed himself to be a tough opponent, durable guy. Took the shots, came back with his own, but really it was the activity of Ortiz, especially down the stretch, that dominated one of those fights that is not hard to score, but got some good rounds in for Ortiz. And I think you can go back to the drawing board, like you said, Goldie, there's going to be some glaring things to work on in the gym. Uh, but, you know, that's 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 part of being an 18 year old pro. You, you, you got a lot to learn. The official decision is in. Let's get it to Pablo Flores. And ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of boxing, we now go to the judges' scorecards. Damas y caballeros, después de seis rounds de combate, nos vamos con las tarjetas de los jueces. All three judges, los tres jueces, Rafael Cortés, Simón Contreras, and César Ferna Flores, reach an agreement, tienen un acuerdo en números 60 to 54. 60 a 54. For your winner, by the way, of unanimous decision. Su vencedor por la vía de la decisión unánime y a un invicto gimnasio Julián Magdaleno Guadalajara Jalisco César Iván Ortiz as expected Ortiz by unanimous decision y también reconocimiento para su rival de la Ciudad de México Antonio González Antonio Gonzalez, the first to take him past round number two. We welcome you back to our Pro Box World Headquarters. Mike Goldberg, Chris Algieri, the Magic Man, Paulie Molinaggi. Paulie, I, I once had a coach in youth hockey say the best thing for young fighters or young hockey players was to go about 700. That way they win enough to stay positive, but they lose enough to stay humble. Now I know in boxing, that might get you in trouble if you start out seven and three, but that's a good learning lesson as you both talked about. 
Yeah, you uh, you get the rounds. Uh, you certainly see the things that you need to work on, um, and you you know you have things to strive for to improve on things to go back with your trainer and your coach. Uh, hopefully, your coach is noticing these things and is is already get, coming up with specific game plans for the work that needs to be done in the gym to improve you. Uh, the good news for Ortiz is he's very young, so he's got he's got time on his side. Uh, there's no need to rush him, and uh, you know, he can go back and work on some of the things. But a good win nonetheless. He got the experience, uh, something he hadn't gotten in a lot of his fights before. Um, if he was getting guys out of there that early before I'd hate to see how bad the opponents must have been before but <laughs> but I'll tell you what I mean it's good rounds that he got and um, certainly a, a, a lot of things uh, he can improve on coach Chris what would be the first two or three things you would tell the young man well same thing that Paulie was saying all night just you could tighten everything up everything was very loopy uh, in the beginning he started out he was, he was punching very strong but he, as he went on his conditioning started to fail a little bit the punches got a little less crisp a little bit wider his lip left a lot of openings a lot of holes in his defense so I would say listen get behind that jab and just work on tightening those punches up not so fat in the movement so to be a little bit tighter come up the middle I think a guy like uh, Gonzalez in the future he might be able to stop oh. and, 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 and you know you're known for left hooks to the body if you're a Mexican fighter so right. you want to live up to that but yeah. you, know, you don't have to rush them from seven miles out as well you know you want to learn to set those up because you know you're going to walk into a left hook to the head as I, as I was noticing he throws them from so far out and he stays straight up if, if an opponent just holds his ground and whips a left hook to the head he's, he can't miss him so take tonight learn from it and be better next time you enter the ring so one of our four fights is in the books and of course there are some big fights forthcoming for the first time in about a dozen years. Saturday night, Canelo Alvarez fighting at home against John Ryder. And then also a fight that I think the Magic Man said way back may never happen. Haney and Lomo. Let's check out our big fight preview. Last October, on, on Pro Box TV, on one of our podcasts, the question was posed to you. Is Devin Haney going to fight Vasily Lomachenko? And this is what you said. And you know what? Everybody out there that wanted to criticize when I first said this. I said this from the very, very beginning when Haney first won the title. I said he's not going to fight Lomachenko. So, Pauly, what happened? And are you ready to apologize to Devin Haney for saying he would never fight Vasily Lomachenko? Well, as the great Ted DiBiase used to say in the old WWF, the million dollar man, everybody has a price. Give me another guy who's been avoided that had these qualities. That either is really awkward or really, awkward or really strong. Like go on, listen, listen. getting fights. So, so Devin Haney has guy, a right? very, very difficult style. And the guy can slow the pace. He can control from the outside. He has physical advantages for these weight classes. We above above. Well, guys, thank you so much for now. For now, our talk is done. Make sure you comment. Go to ProBoxTV.com. You've got daily news. You've got talk shows. You've got fights every other Wednesday. And this is must-see TV when you get these two champs talking. And Paulie, once again, got the last word. We'll see you next time on ProBoxTV.com. And Chris, we're going to give Paulie the first word coming off of that. Speak your mind once in a while, Magic Man. Yeah, there, there's, a, there, there's a lot more in that conversation that, that wasn't shown there. I, I think uh, anybody who uh, tunes in is in for a treat or for a, a good back and forth debate between me and the champ, Chris. Uh, don't take the just the highlight word for it because I'm telling you, there's a lot missing there. <laughs> Yeah, a lot, a lot of context that is going to be fleshed out if you watch the whole thing. And I think I think people will really enjoy it. We sure did. We enjoyed we enjoyed discussing it. It's good to have a, a, a good open discourse so we can discuss the nuances of, of the sweet science. And, and there certainly are some great matchups that we can all as boxing fans look forward to in the coming weeks, in the coming months. And if you're a Canelo Alvarez fan in the coming Days. Now, Wednesday night fights will continue right here on Pro Box TV. We are back live from our Pro Box TV world headquarters on May 17th. Another action packed edition of our Wednesday night fights in the main event 12 0, ultra entertaining. Otar Aranosian makes his return to Pro Box. Also on the card, we have a bunch of unbeaten 7 0, 2020 Haitian Olympian Daryl Blas Val Saint. Heavy-handed 6-0, Najee Lopez, and former Team USA boxing member, 8-0, Marcus Valle, all appear in separate bouts to continue their assault on their respective divisions. 
two weeks from tonight, we are here live. That is Wednesday, May 17th on Pro Box TV. And then it just continues. So just dial it in. When it when you get on your, your mobile device and they say, do you want to repeat? Yeah, put in Wednesday and then say every other week. <laughs> it's very easy to do. If You know Paulie can. He utilizes his phone a, a great deal of time, Chris. So just mark it down, write it down. We're here every other week, and we're happy to bring you great action. We will come from Mexico City at the end of the month, and then a big month of June here at our headquarters, followed by the end of the month and a July celebration from right here in our world headquarters. One fight in the books. And I'll tell you what, May 17th, I cannot wait for because Blast, Naji, Marcus Faye, and Aaron Nosian should put on a great night of fights for the fans in attendance. All right, time now for Oscar Fernandez and Joseph Morales, another young, young man in 19-year-old Hernandez facing 19-year-old Joseph Morales. And Magic Man and, and Chris, this takes us back to the open and what Paulie talked about, not only a matchup on Pro Box TV that you can see around the world, but a lot of important eyes, Chris, watching these two 19-year-olds set to fight. Yeah, I mean, this is an amazing platform. That's what Pro Box TV does for a lot of these fighters who sometimes may fall between the cracks or don't have the opportunities to, to get this exposure. But aside from just seeing what's happening in the ring, they're getting that experience of what's going on fight week and around the ring, like a network fight. I didn't have my first network fight until I was like 15 or 16 and 0. And seeing how it all goes around, the cameras, the lights, it's, it's a different feel. So that, I think these guys are really going to elevate their career getting this exposure that early on. And you see one of the greatest of all time in Canelo Alvarez and how he handles all of the uh, minutia, if you will, of a big fight week for him. Yeah, and like the champ said, it's a different feel. And, 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 and a big fight week is always a different feel. But when right. you get to participate, even in a small, small Smith slither, which is, you know, the appetizer, the, the card earlier in the week, it's still uh, uh, quite an experience, especially for if you're 19 years old, where you're, you're used to um, taking these types of weeks in from your television set. Now you sort of get to participate in your own small way. It's exciting, and you look forward to trying to look your best in front of these people. Indeed, they will both try to do that. Oscar Hernandez and Joseph Morales. Take a look at 19-year-old Oscar Hernandez. Also trained by Marcelo Lopez and Eddie's father, Chepo Reynoso. Second fight at home in Guadalajara. He won a six-round split decision in February at home. Four and one record for Oscar Hernandez, this fight a super bantamweight battle scheduled for six rounds. His opponent comes to us from Mexico City. So we've got the Guadalajara, Mexico City theme going in this fight as well. 19 year old Joseph Morales. First time he is in a fight scheduled for six rounds. Morales, two victories, looking to move his record to three and one as he is set to face off against Oscar Hernandez. Once again, we get it to Pablo Flores. And ladies and gentlemen, we continue with the action. This is Wednesday Night Fights, live on Pro Box TV. Damas y caballeros, continuamos con nuestras acciones. Esto es miércoles de boxeo por la noche, en vivo a través de Pro Box TV, y es presentado por clase y talento de Eddie Reynoso. No boxing, no life. Y Canelo Promotions. This bout is set for six rounds of boxing in the Super Bantamweight Division. Combate pactado a seis asaltos en la división de peso Super Gallo. Your three judges score in this bout in ringside. Sus tres jueces. Cesar Flores, Simur Contreras y Rafael Cortez. When the bell rings, your referee in charge, su referee para medir las acciones, Manuel Rivera. Introducing the fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears a black and red trunks. Officially weighs in 120.8 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul. Pantaloncillo negro con rojo. Con un peso de 120.8 libras. Standing with a record. Two victories, one defeat, one draw, and one KO victory. Presenta un record de dos victorias, una derrota, un empate, y una victoria por la vía del cloroformo. 
de la Ciudad de México, from Mexico City, Joseph Morales. And his opponent across the ring, standing in the red corner, he wears the white and silver trunks. Officially weighs in 121.2 pounds. Y su oponente en la esquina roja, pantalón sin color blanco con plata, con un peso de 121.2 libras. As a professional, he stands with a record four victories, one defeat, and two of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de cuatro victorias, una derrota, y dos de esas victorias por la vía del knockout del establo gimnasio Julián Magdaleno Guadalajara Jalisco Oscar Hernández When the With the final instructions, con las indicaciones finales, su referee en turno Manuel Rivera, six rounds seis asaltos Escuchen bien, trata de dar una pelea limpia mucho cuidado con la cabeza, los golpes en la nuca y los golpes bajos. Si alguno se va a la lona, el otro se va a la esquina neutral para poder contar. Tese es la mano y que gane el mejor. 19 year old against 19 year old and pretty much the same amount of professional experience. Morales for about 16 rounds, Hernandez five about 17 rounds. Here we go. It's time to fight Oscar Hernandez in the white and silver trunks, black and red trunks for Joseph Morales. First six rounder in the professional career of Joseph Morales. Third straight six rounder for Hernandez. In his last fight, he went the distance all six in a victory by split decision. Both men coming out flashing jabs. Not something we saw much of in the first fight. Yeah, both guys working that in and out style so far, trying to see which one gets the advantage. Morales looking to stay busy early. You see Morales trying to use that head movement, trying to create some, some, uh, some openings there on the part of Hernandez. Not really able to land a lot yet. It's, neither guy's really been able to land a lot yet, but at least Morales trying to create something. Just notice that head movement. Trying to create something off of that head movement. While also trying to stay defensively responsible. Nice little counter right hand there by Morales. And Paulie and Chris, both of you guys, when you see young fighters like this, you love to see the movement, that constant movement, the feints, the setup and then the big punches. Yeah, I like what Hernandez is doing. He's changing levels up and down, pulling in and out, looking for shots as he creates openings with his head movement. There's one. There's a nice uppercut from the outside that he's been trying since the opening bell. But yeah, I, I like what I'm seeing from him. He's, he's looking for openings and being, being crafty with it. Morales coming in, putting a combination together, throwing a left to the body of Hernandez. Scheduled for six, round number one. Yeah, I've kind of like what Morales has been doing so far with uh, this, again, the same same kind of head movement um, Using that to kind of uh, put the punches in bunches at least enter the punch zone when he's been able to do it Of course because Hernandez also has uh, been lively when he's found the opening It's funny Morales reminds me of Eric Morales a little bit in terms of the way he holds his gloves his stance and even his haircut a little bit <laughs> Just the way he looks I'm, I'm getting flashes of the great El Terribre Morales did go the distance in his lone Loss and that was his professional debut a four-rounder and a split decision Nice double left hook there body in the head from Morales and he switches southpaw for a moment Yeah, he's done that twice. He just randomly switches and then uh, just goes back. <laughs> I don't know what that's about <laughs> Trying to start to make a concerted effort to the body though when he closes the gap and he's putting those punches in combination now Which I think is gonna help him if he can keep doing that Definitely had a more active first round, did Morales. Yeah, he looked like the heavier handed of the two as well. Mira, güey, nomás. No. El muchacho lo que quiere es agarrarte cuando está parado. Camina, entra y sale, entra y sale, no te va a hacer nada. ¿Eh? Nomás así con las puras piernas, güey. Con las puras piernas es todo, güey. ¿Eh? 
el cabrón te quiere pegar cuando estás parado. No te quedes parado. Entra y sale y sale para los lados, para los lados. Juégalo, 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 juégalo ahí. Te provoco con la mano ahí. Te viene, pan. Te viene, pan. Te viene, combínalo todo. ¿eh? I'm trying to tell uh, Fernandez, you know, use that lead hand and play around and you know, set that trap. And then when he enters, you know, dip and, and, and Va a pesar, make, va a pesar la pelea apenas, ¿eh? Póngase listo. I mean, we know Morales will enter. I mean, off that head movement, he, he has tried to enter and put the combinations together. Let's see if Hernandez has some answers in this round. Hernandez in the white and silver, black and red trunks for Joseph Morales. Mike Goldberg, Chris Algieri, Pauli Molinaggi, Wednesday night, Pro Box TV, coming to you from Cote Jalisco. Just a few days shy of Canelo Alvarez, John Ryder, Canelo fighting at home for the first time in nearly a dozen years. Nice. Very busy here early in this round, Chris. Yeah, nice combination from Morales. Let his hands go. That one came off a hook, got a jab. There it is again with that hook. That left hook, right hand combination has been pretty effective early on in round two. If you base it purely on activity thus far, Paulie, Morales would be in the lead. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's pretty much all you can base it on at this point. I mean, they haven't, they haven't exactly wowed you, but Morales has put together some nice combinations. He's gone upstairs, gone downstairs, and uh, I think his activity put him ahead as now he turns south for that random second again before he goes back to right hand. I wonder if he's even aware he's doing that. It'd be a great time for Oh, big right hand. I was saying, and the uppercut, Chris. Yeah, I was saying that would be a great time for Hernandez to strike when Morales takes that step and goes, goes into that squared stance. At the midway point of round number two, this super bantamweight bout is scheduled for six rounds. And Morales a moment ago landed the biggest punch so far in this fight. Now Hernandez with a good counter. Digging for the body. A few times there, Dick Gonzalez. Not Hernandez, rather. And again right there, Chris, right on cue. Maybe he's trying to, end, maybe he's trying to slow down Morales' activity. With, with those body punches, but it's always interesting when I, I, I hear the corner instructions and then I, I look at what the fighter's doing. He, he hasn't done any playing around at all with his lead hand, I mean, nothing deceptive, but now he's trying to force his way in. And both guys are getting some good exchanges there. Great pace set by Joseph Morales. You guys and I having trouble finding each other. Not one bit. They're both, they're both cracking each other in round number two. Uppercut that lands. A little bit of a feeling out round round number one. Not, not here in round number two. These guys are, are going at it. He sets that southpaw stance, Paulie, for just a split second. I yeah. think it's probably because he's got a punch that he loves from that side, and then if he doesn't see the opening, he goes back to orthodox. I think you're giving him too much credit. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think he has a clue what he's doing there. But but I'll tell you, uh, Chris, the champ made a made a good point. You know, you 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 would probably want to attack him when he's giving you that southpaw look because it's not his main stance and he may not be as defensively responsible out of it, but Hernandez has just been watching him anytime he uh, he's seen Morales switch. That was the first time that Morales actually threw a punch from that stance. He threw a, a body shot with the left hand from the rear, rear side. And Chris, you have as much experience as anybody. I will not enter debate with Magic Man because it's nothing else, even if I win late, is going to wear me out for about a week. How do you recover? I don't know, man. I, I, I've always been known for my gas tank and my endurance, so I think uh, I think I have it mentally as well. But, Paulie, you're always right. Well, you know what? The coffee gets me going. <laughs> I got plenty of gasoline to back up my points. Check out all the programming on your boxing channel, Pro Box TV, Chris Algieri, Paulie Molinaggi, I saw you guys previewing Heaney and Loma in the ring tonight. We'll look forward to that breakdown of the fight as well as it gets closer. Morales, the busier of the two fighters so far. Yeah, it was a good round for both men. They were, they were exchanging really well. This is the best punch of the fight so far for Morales. There's a right hand over the top as Gonzalez uh, Hernandez pulled straight back. Caught that right hand. Yeah, after reaching the shot. a little bit with that jab to the stomach. Good timing shot from Morales. He just started the, first round, this, the third round doing the exact same thing. Jab to the body, pull straight up. Yeah, that right hand's there all day. Hernandez, white and silver. Morales, black and red. Both fighters, 19 years old. Morales, very busy. 
Good counter by Hernandez there. Pro Box TV. We don't promote boxers, we promote boxing. Round three, this one's scheduled for six. Co-main and main event from Guadalajara, still the cup. So for all the activity Morales has, it's not affecting the uh, the willingness of Hernandez to come forward. He holds his ground and he just keeps trucking forward for all those punches Morales has. Yeah, Hernandez is working much harder, but not being any more effective. Morales really keeping it pretty efficient with his punches. Ooh. You figure though, you throw all those punches, you're gonna maybe get the respect of your opponent, but it doesn't look like Hernandez is respecting him much. He's just, he just being outpunched. There's blood on the shoulder of Morales. I'm not sure who it's from. I, I do believe it's from Morales' nose. Hernandez has been throwing some tricky uppercuts on the inside that have been kind of hard to see. Oh, the right hand there from Hernandez. Followed up with a shot to the body. Hernandez in the pocket here. Oh, good body shot. From Morales. Morales definitely stays busy. Punches and bunches, accumulation of damage. But can he damage Hernandez enough to get a victory by stoppage, or will he do enough to ride his way to victory number three of his young professional career? And tell you, well, the second half of this fight is going to be interesting. We're in round three, and Hernandez keeps on walking down Morales, trying to psychologically stress him, and it's forcing Morales to throw a lot of punches. Yes, he's getting the better of the rounds, but I'm wondering how much of the gas tank is going to be left in Morales if he's throwing all these punches, because Hernandez is starting to, you know, make his shots count a little bit more and more when he is throwing them, even though he's much less active. And especially with blood coming from the nose, that can that can sap your energy. If you can't breathe, you got a hindered breathing, you're, you're, you're going to tire that much quicker. And as it gets deeper, it would be the first time that Joseph Morales could see round five or six. First time scheduled for six rounds. Showing that that great conditioning from training in Mexico City, but well, much to Paulie's point, can he keep this pace going for three more rounds? So the action, a nice right left hook there by Hernandez, the stomach. Good exchange there. Yeah, that was a sharp right hand, and it was nice that he followed it back with the left hook, both landed well. Well, Chris, I think, and I hope, that uh, Oscar Hernandez isn't the one with the damage to his nose because he just cleared it. <laughs> That's a no-no if you've got an injury going to the nose in a fight. White and silver for Oscar Hernandez. He comes into this fight at four and one. Joseph Morales, two and one. Both youngsters, 19 years old. And a lot more movement towards that southpaw stance. Last round and now continuing in this round for Joseph Morales. Hey, Goldie, you mentioned that you're not clearing your nose when you have nose damage. I remember my first coach always telling me, don't blow your nose, don't blow your nose. I never understood why. Then I broke my orbital. And then I realized that it, what happens is you actually, if you have a fracture in the orbital, the nasal passages have a, have a leak air into the skin under your eye. That's why they swell up so fast. Eventually, it fills with blood as the fight wears on. But that's why you see an eye close really, really quickly. It's only because the guy clears his nose and blows air through his nasal passage into the eye socket. That was described to us, Pauly, from a man who has four, at least four degrees, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> and does it sound any less painful than it actually was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got four fractures on my orbital for that as well. Yeah, you, you, you would rather have learned it in the classroom than in real life, yeah. right, Chris? Yeah. That one with real life was not necessary, but it happens. 
Years ago, Josh Koscheck fought George St. Pierre in Montreal, and he suffered a broken orbital bone, and he had to go to Boston to get the surgery. And then, Chris, much to your point, he had to wait about a week to 10 days before he could get on an airplane yeah. and fly back to the West Coast because of the swelling that's, and what altitude of I'll tell you what's interesting. I had my surgery in Boston, too. I wonder if it was the same doctor. Yeah, and that was in an MMA orbit, battle. Yeah, for my orbital bone as well. I just didn't fix mine. <laughs> <laughs> Seems as Morales able to keep the pace here in round number four, although Hernandez scoring more than we've seen in the first three rounds. Yeah, again, talking about that mental stress, Hernandez trying to keep it on Morales, but credit to Morales, he's still trying to get that alpha going. And trying to, you know, win the, get, get the advantage in the rounds on, based on the activity, despite Hernandez's uh, presence in, in front of him consistently. Ooh, nice combination there. Doubled up the right hand. Uppercut and right hand over the top from Hernandez. And a dig to the body. It looked like that got, that got in. Had an effect on Morales. Hernandez staying in tight here. Final 30 seconds of round four. This is an inter interesting fight. It's like, what do you like? You know, the, the, the Morales was busier, but the, the, you got the body language of Hernandez putting on that physical pressure. Oof, landing uppercuts like that, blooding the nose. Southpaw again. That's the that's the, the strike he's looking for, is that left hook from the southpaw stance at the end of round four. So Morales will move to round five in the first time in his professional career. <laughs> Es todo lo que te pedimos, ya vealo fuerte, güey. Ya vealo, ya vealo, ya vealo. Ya no hay necesidad de lo demás. Ya vealo, ya vealo, ya vealo. Tranquilo. Esta pelea es de ustedes, güey. Si tengan, tienen que apretarme, güey. O yo. No tiene nada, ya se cansó, carnal. Nada más pégale abajo y remátalo arriba, güey. Cuando te lleve para atrás, párese firmes. Pum, el upper de derecha corto y lo mete, le mete el volado, le mete el gancho. This is why he's been trying to go southpaw, guys. Well, I mean, like I said, we, we haven't seen him much. He, he goes into that stance a lot, but doesn't throw a whole lot of punches in there. Normally just switches almost immediately. There we saw him trying to swing that, that sweeping left hook. He tried one a few rounds earlier to the body as well. So uh, to your point, Goldie, yeah, he probably likes that punching and steps into that stance for that reason. Round number five. Oscar Hernandez in the white and silver. Joseph Morales. This the first career six round fight of his young professional journey. And he is in round five for the first time. Scorecards after four rounds, Chris. I got a 2-2. Two -two. Um, again, it's what do you like? It's, 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 like, it's the punching, combination punching from Riles, but he got that physical pressure and some of those sneaky shots like that one. Um, from Hernandez. Pauly? I got a 3-1 uh, from Morales, but he's uh, slowing down. I got the last round for Hernandez, and I, Hernandez is uh, you know, gaining momentum as the fight wears on. Staying busy is a good way to keep the judges' attention and have them maybe favor the scorecards. But much to your point, Chris, you've got to look at the little things that are happening on the counters from Oscar Hernandez, right? Mexican judges like guys who go forward. So you got to think that that too. There's the perception of the ring general in the ring, the guy who's in control of the space. And a lot of times, a lot of Mexican judges prefer when a guy is coming forward and being aggressive. So that works in the favor of Joseph Morales. Correct. Uh, Oscar Morales. Oh, I'm sorry. No, Oscar Hernandez. I'm confusing the names. All right. I think, yeah, I think, I think the, the physical pressure from Oscar Hernandez is something that the judges might be like. They might like that, too. And there you see a little bit more of it, midway point of round five. Yeah, especially as he's making it count more and more. He's starting to get those shots in there. He's starting to land a little bit cleaner. Um, Morales maybe getting a little arm weary, all, all that activity. But he's, uh, you know, credit to him to keep going with the activity. But it does get a little arm weary, and it gives Hernandez opportunities to punch in between him. Hey, Hernandez is definitely the flashier of the two, but a lot of the good work has been done by Morales, like shots like that. But yeah, you're seeing more of the eye-catching shots coming from Hernandez, like that, popping the head, head up. He's also got all that physical pressure. And he's got the quick twitch, and he is going in a straight line when he does throw that jab. Little jab right there scores, and again, one more time for Oscar Hernandez. And I call the guys like this, they're, uh, you know, 
lesser level of, of pros. I call them your turn, my turn, where they're incapable of actually making a guy miss and make him pay. So, so they what they do is they, they take turns punching, you know, and, and unless it's an accidental exchange where sometimes they just happen to be throwing at the same time, there's nothing actually set up there where, where one, one guy's trying to make a miss and time him, uh, despite the instructions that Hernandez got at the end of round one, which was to play around and set traps. I don't know that either of these guys are even capable of doing that. Right after a couple of good jabs from Hernandez, Morales snapped the head of his opponent back. Sometimes when Morales switches, I just think he's trying to maybe buy himself a second of rest, you know, because he forces Hernandez to uh, reset to the new target. Although sometimes they're punching even regardless yeah. of that. So we will head to the sixth and final round between these two 19-year-olds from Code Jalisco, Guadalajara, Mexico tonight. Your, t your turn, my turn, fighters. You can pick them. actually make for entertaining fights. Again. They're, both, they're both landing. Yeah, but the, the problem with your turn, my turn, fighters, is a lot of times the other guy's always prepared when the attack is coming his way. So nothing, typically with your turn, my turn, fighters, a lot doesn't land clean because each time one guy's getting his turn, the other guy's prepared defensively already because he's fully focused on his defense, and the other one's fully focused on his offense, and then they switch, and they sort of turn back and forth. I mean, for me, your turn, my turn fighters can never be world champions. I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen one. But sometimes they're, they're durable and tough enough to, you know, get title challenges or get up there, but very, very rarely. I remember the, the probably the best your turn, my turn fighter I can remember seeing is probably Matthew Hatton. Matthew Hatton was a, a your turn, my turn fighter. He never, he never ever counterpunched. He was either going or he was uh, uh, taking, but he was uh, kept a, a tight defense, so therefore when it wasn't his turn, he wasn't letting you hit him clean. And of course, he'd take his turn as well. Very different from his brother, Ricky Hatton, who yeah. was a my turn, my turn fighter. <laughs> my turn, my turn, my turn, and more my turn. Yeah. And, and you don't get a turn. Uh, yeah. My turn, my turn, let me cut an angle, it's my turn again. Sixth and final round of this super bantamweight bout. That's a very important yeah, round. It is, it is, especially you had a 2-2. Two, two. Who'd you give round five to, Chris? I gave it to Hernandez. I, I thought he, he landed more of the eye-catching shots. Yeah, I, got it. I gave it to Hernandez, too. So that 3-1 on your card, Paulie, is now 3-2, with this being the sixth and final round. Yeah, I think we both have a 3-2. Yeah, 3-2 for the opposite ways. Yeah. Hernandez trying to put together some scoring punches here. Under two now. Both guys are going for it. Guadalajara against Mexico City. Once again in bout number two. Just a couple of days shy of Cinco de Mayo and Canelo Alvarez and John Ryder. Under 90. And of course, they're not making it easy to score this round. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, I said your turn, my turn. They're both trying to make it their turn this, this round. They're both trying to make a concerted effort to get off. And Morales, as we were watching it closely, able to keep a pretty good pace in this sixth and final round. Yeah, he saved a little bit for this last round. He's, he's really been going in. He's actually having a good round. It really come, could come down to this last minute. Changing levels, but then Hernandez answers back. Blood from the nose of Hernandez. Final 30 seconds. Big swing and a miss with that left hook. He's got that little sneaky step to southpaw again. 20 seconds. They don't quench in Mexico, man. <laughs> they just keep do going. not. Yeah, refs, refs have a e very easy job. Oh, good uppercut there by Morales. Good finish from both men. That uppercut might as they might go the distance. Cinched it for me for Morales. So Morales and Hernandez go the distance. 
second straight fight, a six rounder in which Oscar Hernandez has gone the distance. His last one against Espinoza, he was victorious by split decision. It's in the hands of the judges now. Still to come, our co-main event of the evening. It's a middleweight matchup featuring 10 and 0, Lazaro Lorenzana from San Diego, born and raised in San Diego, but he has fought in Guadalajara many times. His opponent is Alexis Rios. His nickname, Halcon, means the hawk. His entire family will be in attendance tonight as he fights in Jalisco. And then our main event of the evening is Jonathan Lopez, a very talented American that Chris has known for a long time, born in Pennsylvania, fighting out of Orlando. He is 10 and 0. His opponent is Osvaldo Nunez. That one scheduled in the lightweight division. That is our main event of the evening. Let's break down what we just saw from these two 19-year-old super bantamweights. Yeah, good action both ways. Um, Morales got off to, a, a, for me, a, a quicker start, was more active, but as the fight went on, Hernandez started to land in between those shots. Maybe Morales got a little bit arm-weary, and, um, you know, you started seeing uh, Hernandez started to get those shots in between uh, the, day, the daylight that was being left on the combinations of Morales. Yeah, I mean, both guys were successful landing big shots. Neither one really hurt each other too much, but, I mean, they, they closed out the show in the last round. For me, I, I thought Morales won the, took that last round, giving it a draw on my scorecard. But I could see Morales win, winning the fight as well. So this is one of those fights. Either, it could go either way or draw in my book, and I, I wouldn't argue it. And Chris Morales is coming off a majority draw in his last fight back in February as we await the judges to render their decision. And we get set to get it back to Pablo Flores with the official decision. And ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of boxing, we now go to the judges' scorecards. Damas y caballeros, después de seis rounds de combate, nos vamos con las tarjetas de los jueces. Judge, el juez, Simón Contreras, he scores at 58 to 56. 58 a 56, in favor, a favor de Morales. Rafael Cortez, he scores at 58-56. 58 a 56, in favor, a favor de Hernández. En César Flores, he scores at 59-55. 59 a 55. For your winner, by the way, of split decision. Su vencedor por la vía de la decisión dividida. Guadalajara, Jalisco, presente. Oscar Hernandez. Second straight six round split decision at home for Oscar Hernandez. Judges had it both ways. The final judge saw it 59 55 for Hernandez. And he moves to five and one in his professional career. Code Jalisco, two fights yet to come here on our Wednesday night Pro Box TV. Mike Goldberg, the Magic Man, Pauli Malinaji, Chris Algieri. That fight, those two men stayed busy, but you guys kind of broke it down, what Mexican judges look for, and that third judge definitely saw what Hernandez was doing, Chris. Yeah, I mean, when the scores are being read, it was 58-56 one guy, 58-56 the other guy. I was like, ah, oh, this is one of those fights. Like I said, it could go either way. I was, I was expecting a closer third judge's decision to have ju judges rendering. 59-55, a little bit wide in my book, but um, I, like I said, I could have seen either man winning that fight. I could have seen it a draw, but... I, I really can't argue that much. Paulie, you talked about it in the fight, though, the, the fact that Hernandez was 
Even though Morales was busier, Hernandez was more aggressive in the eyes of the judges. Yeah, and, and as Chris said during the fight, you know, Mexican judges sometimes put a lot of stock into who's coming forward. Um, I, some of the decisions I've seen in Mexico, some of them actually don't even watch the fight. They just almost like follow the leader, whoever's going forward. Uh, this was a tough fight to score. Uh, could go either way. I think 59-55 is a bit wide for either guy, but uh, that guy liked to watch follow the leader, and so he was just scoring for whoever was coming forward, and Hernandez was coming forward. So that guy liked watching follow the leader, and we know the leader of this weekend is Canelo Alvarez as he fights at home for the first time in nearly 12 years. We talked earlier about Haney and Lomo. They finally are going to meet, and there was a big fight that took place not all that long ago, broken down by these two men, Pauli Malinaji and Chris Algieri. Saturday, April 22nd, the much-anticipated Tank Davis-Ryan Garcia fight happened. Tank Davis won on a seventh-round knockout, but the talk after the fight wasn't so much about Tank, it was about Ryan Garcia and whether or not he quit. And this guy quit because he didn't want to face what was waiting for him in the second half of the fight. We would have never known yes or no if he quit. It's not just that one shot. He's been getting hit for four and a, a half champ, rounds champ, consistently you're talking to his about, body. Well, but think about your own experience against Pacquiao. You were on. You were undaunted. You went down. You kept getting up. You were. You. You. Were, there's nothing that was going to convince you. Hey, listen. Let me. Let me. Let me get bail out while I'm ahead. You know what? I, I'm behind in this fight. Let me just save myself. No, you got a responsibility as a fighter. You got a responsibility as a man to yourself, to fans, and you and you go through with it, right? But what about the fight itself? I actually thought it was entertaining. I enjoyed the fight. Oh, I, like you're saying it. I no, thought it was a good. Fight. I enjoyed it. I saw competitive aspect of Tank versus Garcia was over after the round two knockdown. Garcia's okay. changed. No I'm not arguing with that. I'm not arguing with that because I the just adjustments think adjustments were made by Gervonta and he yes. broke a few. But more then we got to see. So we got to see how good Gervonta was from then on. The fight changed, right? I, First two rounds, mean it was very very tense. So what I take from that is you were highly entertained by that fight, Paulie. <laughs> I got a lot more than that to say. You got to watch the whole clip. Uh, that's always the case, Chris, isn't it? But that big punch in the second round did take Garcia off his game. And now he's talked about changing trainers. A lot of stuff going on. It's going to be interesting now to see how Ryan Garcia bounces back or does not bounce back. Well, that, that's also what Paulie and I talked about on the on that clip. You got make sure you guys watch the whole thing because we, we literally covered everything there there is to talk about in the aftermath of the Tank and Ryan fight, uh, the saga. But I mean, yeah, I, I, honestly, listen, Ryan has a some things to, to work on. Yeah. But listen, we got Tank Davis now. He is a. a, a prime superstar now. I mean, we, we have one of the best fighters in the world um, who's been able to showcase himself, and I am super high on him, and I can't wait for his next fight. And there's been some back and forth over the years with Floyd Mayweather Jr., but Floyd, Tank said, was a big part of that victory that night, gave him some great advice, and congratulations to Tank because he is quickly becoming one of the faces, maybe soon to be the top face in boxing, especially with the style in which he fights. So check out the full breakdown from Chris and Pauly as we are your boxing channel, Pro Box TV. Still two fights to come from Mexico this evening, our co-main event and main event. And then in two weeks, we are right back here in our world headquarters in the main event. That night, 12-0, ultra entertaining Otar Aranosian makes his return to Pro Box. Also, the card is filled with unbeaten 7 and 0 Haitian Olympian Daryl Blasfell Saint 6 and 0 heavy-handed Naji Lopez 8 and 0 former team USA boxing member Marcus Valle all appear in separate bouts to continue their assault on their respective divisions 2 weeks from tonight we continue with all the action right here on Pro Box TV every two weeks. If you don't know how to use the phone, learn how to use it now. Set it up for every other week. 31st back from Mexico City. Then we are at our world headquarters on June 14th with another night of great fights here on your boxing channel. We do not promote boxers. We promote boxing. And we keeps you busy all throughout 2023.
And speaking of fights, we have moved now to our co-main event of the evening. 24-year-old, 10 and old, Lazaro Lorenzana lives in San Diego, but he trains and fights a ton in Guadalajara, and he is trained by the great Eddie Reynoso, the 2019 WBC Trainer of the Year, and of course, a mainstay with Canelo Alvarez. His opponent is 28-year-old Alexis Rios. Mike Goldberg, Paulie Malinaji, Chris Algieri. He may be born and raised in San Diego, but he could get his residency, I think, Lazaro, in Mexico as much as he fights there, Chris. Yeah, I mean, why not? I mean, you, you're close enough. You can go down there and get, get a quote-unquote hometown crowd, even though it's not really your hometown. But San Diego's a nice place to live and train. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to argue with that, his, his choice to stay there. And he just turned 24 years old on May 1st, but ultra impressive, Paulie. 10-0, and 0, eight knockouts. I'm looking forward to watching this young kid. Yeah, yeah, you know, there's uh, there's a lot of upside when you're when you're that young and you've already built up your record a little bit. Um, looking to see how much he's need, he's improved since turning pro and how much uh, how far of a way he's got to go before he fights in some real important contender fights. And he has one of the best in the business believing in him, and that is Eddie Reynoso, who of course his father we've seen a couple of times cornering fighters already tonight, and he will be a very busy man. Eddie will when Saul Canelo Alvarez fights on Saturday. Lazaro Lorenzana has made his way to the ring. He has defeated all he has faced prior to this. Eight by knockout, coming off a eight round unanimous decision victory back on March 4th. And what did I say, he might be in San Diego, but he has got the white green and red working tonight. Check out our keys to victory for 10-0, Lazaro Lorenzana. Yeah, Lorenzana, he's, he's the much bigger man, um, so he needs to impose that will and his physical size on his opponent. Next, don't languish on the ropes. I, I noticed in, in some of his fights that he'd like to sit on the ropes and let his guys, his opponents get off with, with Kevin Creel, that he did that quite a bit. Should not be doing that with these guys. And then also, push a fast pace. He tends to be very methodical. He builds momentum as he goes. Um, but he's got someone in front of him who hasn't been that busy in the last couple of years. So I, I think attacking him early is a good idea. Keys to victory for 10-0 Lauren Zana. His opponent is Alexis Rios, and much to Chris's point, this is just his second fight in over four years. But he's a veteran who at times has been undersized, but he is going to try to, even though he's the one from Jalisco, he's the one that's going to try to set that O to a one for Lorenzano Pauli, his keys to victory. Yeah, be aggressive. You know, Lorenzano likes to take his time, as Chris was just saying. You know, a lot of times I watch Lorenzano, he thinks he's Canelo without being Canelo. So he, like, he likes to take his time, take a slow start, uh, take a slow pace. So you have an opportunity to be aggressive and make him pay for that. Uh, answer everything. He's not busy. So uh, uh, until he builds a momentum, don't let him get comfortable and build, comfortable and build up that momentum. Continue to, you know, press him and uh, keep him busy. And use veteran moves. You know, he, he's fought the tougher opposition. He's never been stopped. Uh, use that experience and durability, and he can trouble the inactive opponent. Our tail of the tape for this, our co-main event of the evening. Lazaro Lorenzano just turned 24 on May 1st, as I mentioned. He is four years younger than his opponent. He does have a two-inch height advantage, but the reach is identical at 70. This one scheduled for eight. And with the official introductions, once again, Pablo Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Wednesday Night Fights on Pro Box TV. Damas y caballeros, este es los miércoles de boxeo por la noche en Pro Box TV. Y es presentado por clase y talento de Eddie Reynoso. No boxing, no life. Y Canelo Promotions. This bout set for eight rounds of boxing in the Super Welterweight Division. Ocho rounds de combate. In la categoría de peso super welter, your three judges go in this bout and rank side. Sus tres jueces, Simón Contreras, Rafael Cortés y César Flores. When the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, su referee para medir las acciones, Javier Peña. 
Introducing the fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears the white trunks. Officially weighs in 156.3 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul. Pantaloncillo color blanco. Con un peso oficial de 156.3 libras. He stands with a record. Four victories, two defeats, one draw and one KO victory. Presenta un record de cuatro victorias, dos derrotas, un empate y una de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. De Zapopan, Jalisco. Alexis El Alcón Rios And his opponent across the ring Standing in the red corner He wears the white trunks with green trim Officially weighs in 156 and a half pounds Y su rival en esquina roja Pantaloncillo color blanco con verde Con un peso de 156.5 libras In 10 pro bouts He stands perfect 10 victories, no defeats, and eight of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de 10 victorias, cero derrotas, y ocho de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. Originario de San Diego, California, representando Tijuana, con sangre de Guadalajara, Jalisco. Lázaro, el rey Lorenzana. And now with the final instructions, con las indicaciones finales, su referee in turno, Javier Peña. Eight rounds, ocho asaltos. Traes tu protector? Traes tu protector? Vale. Bien. Muchachos, ¿quieren una pelea limpia? Cuidado con las cabezas, no golpes en la nuca, no golpes en los riñones, golpes siempre arriba del cinturón y muy atentos a mis indicaciones. Choquen guantes y suerte a los dos. Co-main event of the evening, scheduled for eight rounds. As Lorenzana puts his perfect record on the line, 10 and 0. Alexis Rios looking for his fifth career victory. Second eight round fight for both men. Here we go. It's time to fight. Lorenzano in the white and red trunks. Alexis Rios in the white and silver trunks. Little green trim also for Lauren, Lorenzo, Lazaro Lorenzana who, as we said, is second home, especially training under the mentorship of Eddie Reynoso, is across the border here in Guadalajara, Jalisco. As you said, Champa, this, this guy fights a lot like Canelo. His style is... He tries to. He tries to. For me, um, when I see guys trying this hard to copy somebody, you know, you can never imitate or duplicate somebody exactly. So you want to maybe take the pieces of their style that you like and then also add in your own little spices. And Lorenzana, I don't think, has gotten that no, that memo. Um, and even in the footage I've seen of him, he, he tries to mimic Canelo to a T. And, and with that little of an output, you better be a monster puncher if you're going to have that little of an output um, and, and try to copy that style. Because even in the looks he gives, I mean, it, it's... it's um, it's almost identical in, in the looks he's trying to give. But when you're fighting a guy four and two who's used to being an opponent, you know, he's, he's not going to try to take control of center ring. So you're going to be able to get away with it against guys like this. But when you take on guys who are also looking to come to sh show up and win, they're going to try to control center ring. And if you're not active, they will control center ring. Speaking of active, I mean, the, the, uh, the opponent here, Alex Alexis Rios, he, he's been inactive in terms of being in the ring, not, not even just being inactive as a as a, a guy in the ring he's, he hasn't been uh fighting very often the last couple of years like we, took, we said from the top yeah a guy like that he's probably not going to be that busy once the bell rings yeah and he hasn't been thus far so he's he's allowed lauren's honor to get away with all the all the posing that he's doing also lauren's you can see he's the much bigger man rios has fought as low as 135 in his professional career and, and they're, they're just two years uh, two years ago he was 147 so this fight's being fought at middleweight. And that is something on the scouting report, guys, that we talked about with Lorenzana is that he generally does try to use his size and strength and being the bigger man 
at this weight class of even 160 and impose his will on the undersized opponent. Under 30 seconds left in our co-main event round number one. Scheduled for eight. You know, Lorenzana has eight KOs in his 10 wins. It's yet to really be seen if that power is real or not based on his, his competition thus far. But I think this is a pretty good test if he's able to get the stoppage here against a, a pretty tough guy in, in, in Rios. That, uh, that might give us a little indication if that power is real or not. I'll tell you what another indication is when you're 10-0 and you're still fighting guys 4-2, and two, that's an indication that you probably haven't faced a stiff level of competition. Very good point. Suelta. Ok, sigue fiteando, sigue metiendo tu yap, su yap, tu yap está cayendo en sus manos. Pero de aquí abre el 3 para que ya entre a la cara y puede cerrar con el 2, ok? De repente mete doble yap, la derecha. Cuando estés en la distancia corta, aprovecha, la pega de abajo, va. Otra cosa, todo lo que bloquees, contraatácalo. Lo estás leyendo muy bien, pero no lo estás aprovechando. Estás, estás leyéndolo porque lo estás, lo estás defendiendo, pero lo estás contraatacando. Algo que decir. San Diego, they stress the jab. You go south of the border, and they stress the body work, and there it is right there. That was a killer shot. They landed beautifully underneath the elbow. And, uh, you know, we talking how tough Rios is. He, he, didn't, he took that shot pretty well. As you pointed out pre-fight, Chris, he has gone the distance in both of his losses. One, an eight-rounder. He's got a draw. He had a four-round that went against him in the unanimous decision. But... He has had some time on and a lot of time off. Two fights in 2015, two in 16, none in 17, one in 18, one in 19, none in 2020 or 2021, and now fighting for the first time since September here in our co-main event of the evening against a very busy 10-0 Lazaro Lorenzana. With the Magic Man, the former two-time world champion, Paulie Malignaggi, former world champion, Chris Algieri, Mike Goldberg here, Pro Box TV, from Guadalajara tonight, as we continue our Wednesday night fights on your boxing channel. Lorenzana's been landing some very crisp, sharp shots thus far. Not really throwing any combinations, but Pot shotting very well, digging good left hooks to the liver, landing some good uppercuts on the inside. You know, the big talk is his power is built around being that bigger and stronger man. And you look at the frame of 24 year old Lazaro Lorenzana, and you can see what the people who have scouted him are talking about, Paul. Yeah, but he doesn't really fight in a way that he uses his that physical size. So he's in there now, throwing in a couple good uppercuts, good timing shots there. but. He, he's, he's naturally bigger here, but he's not exactly pushing the pace uh, with using that physical size. He's, uh, you know, I, I think if he starts to land the, those body shots a little more consistently, um, as he's doing very well when he does throw them, I think he'll be able to slow down uh, the opponent a little faster. I think you said the key word there, consistency. That, that's the thing I think that is lacking from uh, Lorenzon, especially early on in a fight. Like we had mentioned he's a, he's a momentum fighter. He builds once he gets comfortable and is able to let his hands go, he'll put more pressure. But early on, he's really just pot shotting, picking, picking his spots. Yeah, he's got a non-existent jab, too. He just sticks it out there. Oh, just as I say that, he threw the jab. But um, pretty much he sticks it out there looking to throw hard right hands and other shots off of it. 30 seconds on the clock here in round two. Our co-main event scheduled for eight rounds. Rios is starting to oblige him on the inside there, so maybe we get some good exchanges here if Rios continues to try to oblige him like that. Rios fighting at home. Lorenzana fighting in his second home. Rios needs to be careful letting Lorenzana land those left hooks to the liver the way he has been. I think he landed two or three good ones this round, one in the last round. Those are shots in the bank. Yep. Yeah, those will stick with you for a couple rounds, if not a couple days. No quiero que te quedes en corto con el intercambiar. Por fuera y estás contra golpeando por dentro. 
No, güey. A cinta, si ya me voy para un lado, Ope, ya me voy para el otro y Ope. Porque él está aquí. Tienes que dar tus, tus pasos diagonales. Él nada más te está esperando que tires uno y levantarte, no, pero tienes que ponerte bien vivo en eso, cabrón, ¿eh? Okay. ¿Vale? Sí. Ponle ahí, güey. Ponle aquí, güey. Ponle aquí. Don't forget, guys, you can uh, subscribe to ProBox TV for just $1.99 a month with no advertisements or on our YouTube pages with advertisements completely free. You get all the, the action for our live fights and uh, our uh, great podcasts, great shows, talk shows, and whatnot. And go to the website, ProBoxTV.com, Pro, ProBoxTV.com, and you'll get uh, stuff like the talk shows and the podcasts and all that, all that good stuff, previews and reactions as well. Uh, we showed you some of those previews tonight and there's a lot more that came from uh, there's a tremendous amount of content that's on the site already and it's only it's only going to get fleshed out as the time goes on boxing never sleeps and basically neither do, do, do paulie and i because all we do yeah. is cover this stuff now and there's no season with boxing so the, it's, it's terrific to have the, our, our channel because uh you know there's no seasons like other sports so uh, it's, it's a year-round sport and we cover it year-round your boxing channel Start of this round, round three, Rios is actually pushing the action, coming forward, has backed Lorenzana up to the ropes. See if he can do anything with that. Yeah, he's uh, he's probably seen Lorenzana is not that active, and uh, probably figures, you know what, let 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 himself be on the on the front foot trying to press him and see. Let's see what kind of reaction he gets out of Lorenzana. Yeah, a lot of guys who only fight one way are used to being aggressive. Don't know how to fight backwards. They don't have the same power. It's almost like you, you're meeting the lion in his own den, and. Uh, you, you can get opportunities there that, ooh, just like that. Oh. Oh, and Donna fighting off the ropes. But if you notice, there was no power on those shots. He was all fast hands. He was very tall. He didn't have his legs underneath him. Oh, Rios bringing it on. Oh, good uppercut there. By Rios as well. Oh, good body shot there from Lorenzana. Rios took that well. And that was a nice move. So Lorenzana rips around the head, tries to push him aside, and then the Rios just sidestepped with him. Yeah. Said, nope, I'm not Cut going. Him yep. yep. Cut him off. Nice move there from Rios. And we spoke about Rios, how he has not been stopped in any of his, his previous losses. And, you know, maybe he just, he felt the power from, from Lorenzana. Goes, you know what? This guy's not stopping me either. Let me let me go push the action. Yeah, and you know, sometimes, you know, Lorenzana put some good weight behind the shots. But again, they, they, there's few and far between. So you, you have a lot of opportunities to attack him. And now it seems like Lorenzana's throwing because he's against the ropes. But Rios is out punching him here. And Lorenzana's just being forced to fight. He doesn't really want to fight at this pace. Mm. And, and you had mentioned last fight, the uh, your turn, my turn guy. Lawrence is not that kind of guy. He throws counter shots in the middle of shots. A lot of times those are the shots that your opponent doesn't see can really hurt you. 20 seconds in round number three. Big swing at the end of this round. Oh, Rios is making a fight out of this. Good body shot there by Lawrence Anna. We said he wanted to spoil the show, guys, and he is looking to do so. A lot of punches here at the end of this round. I think uh, Rios might have heard your keys to victory. He's <laughs> being aggressive, answering everything. Yeah, you're going to force Lorenzana. If you keep doing that, you're going to force Lorenzana to fight when he doesn't want to fight. But you can see Lorenzana sort of uh, got a habit, sort of like Canelo, where he likes to dictate the pace and likes to decide when he decides to fight and when he decides to rest. A good action round, really pushed by Rios. As soon as that bell rang in the third round, he came right forward, landed some good shots, especially when he had Lorenzana against the ropes. That was that combination I said there wasn't much power on that shot, on the shots. Like you said, he was he was just answering and fighting because he's being forced to, not really setting up those shots and putting his weight behind it. But also landed some good shots there, but not the same kind of power he had early on. And also it it, uh, it didn't really get the respect of Rios who stayed right in front of him. It didn't back him off. And, and he continued to press him the entire the entire round. Good action from both guys in that round, but Rios really uh, started to, you know, force Lorenzana to fight when he didn't want to, while Lorenzana in the rounds previous to that had been able to decide when he wanted to fight and when he wanted to rest. White, red, and green for Lorenzana.
and Rios in the white and silver scorecard midway through the fight, Chris. Uh, I have it three rounds to none for, for Lorenzani. You could argue that last round, but he still landed. Uh, I'm sorry, four rounds to none uh, for Lorenzani. You could argue that last round, Rios came out hard, but still got hit with a lot of shots. Yeah, I got a 3-1. I gave, uh, I gave the last round to Rios. Rios matching the pace of his opponent in the last round. Still to come, our main event of the evening, unbeaten. Jonathan Lopez against Osvaldo Nunes. He's good dig to the body there from Lorenzano. And a good hook to the head there by Rios as well. Good exchange from both guys there with those good shots. Curious to see how Lorenzano is going to deal with the guy who's not respecting him and is really pushing the pace the way that Rios is. Tell you what, I'd be curious to see how Lorenzana deals with just a jabber. You know, he's not very active with the lead hand, except uh, you know when he wants to throw those, those lead hooks at this at this uh, at this close range. And look where we are. This is what I mentioned that Lorenzana yep. needs to not do. Don't languish on the ropes. He's the same thing against Cameron oh, Creal. Oh. Ooh, big shots from Rios. And a good angle change as well from Rios. Good footwork to, to create that punching angle and then get off the shot. And the confidence of Rios is growing rapidly here in round number five. We used to call that move pyramid in Andre Rios. Yeah, it's yeah. pyramid, exactly, yep. <laughs> Vividly remember him yelling that from, from every corner of a fight or in a gym. Yeah, Rios must have heard it there too. <laughs> he pyramided there. Big swing and a miss and by nice Rios. And body shots. Rios is starting to make it uncomfortable. Just on the sheer determination and, and decision making of it. You know what? I'm just not going to back off this guy. Oh, good left hook upstairs. Action packed round number five. Our co main event of the evening. <laughs> Trying to size him up and go to the body. But here goes Alexis Rios again. Just a few nights shy of Canelo Alvarez and John Ryder and these two men in our Coleman event putting on a show. I'll tell you what, see how little patience they have for clinching in Mexico. That was the first clinch for Lorenzana. He already got a stern warning from the ref. <laughs> the ref says, the ref says, I will have none of that tonight. Just missed with that left. Setting the tone early. The ref. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that here. <laughs> I tell you, Rios is starting to get his way back into the fight for me, man. He's, he's pushing the pace, um, and really, he's dictating uh, when it's time to fight and when it's not time to fight. Hey, aquí, aquí y aquí. No te metas aquí. Aquí, oper volado. Pero no te metas aquí porque él te está pegando acá atrás, güey. Bien vivo, güey. Yeah, you can, I can easily see two rounds going to, to Rios thus far, closing in on that, that lead from Lorenzana. So the ball Lorenzana was against the ropes last round, and so that pyramid, uh, we call that the pyramid there, the sidestep, and then creating the punching angle uh, that uh, Rios did just that and was able to get off the combination. You know, you had mentioned, Champ, the, the word comfort and it looking uncomfortable. And I saw that in the fight when he fought another savvy veteran in, in uh, uh, Cameron Creal. And, and there were times where he was very uncomfortable. He put himself on the ropes and let Creal work. And he had some success, and just like we're seeing here with, with Rios. And that fight went the distance, the eight-round distance, back on March 4th, the fight that Chris is talking about. Round number six. This one's scheduled for eight, white, red, and green. For 10-0, Lazaro Lorenzana, Alexis Rios in the white and silver. And he is making this a fight. Yeah, Lorenzana definitely has found himself in a fight tonight. He's got someone in front of him who is not respecting his power, not respecting his, his, his pace, and is really pushing him. by Lorenzano. A good counter there on the counter uppercut. And he can brought that uppercut over the top as well with the right hand over the top after landing the uppercut. 
to the body. Ooh. What was that? It didn't look like a low blow to me. Yeah. I don't know what that was about. I don't know what, what the stoppage is. I don't know what, why Lorenzano went to the neutral corner. I don't know why the referee decided to stand in front of him. I don't know what a lot of that was at all. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it looked like he was trying to say it was low. The referee said right away it was not continue to fight, and that's what they do. Yeah, but he called his own timeout, and everybody agreed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Lorenzano went to the neutral corner. The referee stepped in between. If you turn your back like that, a ref can yeah. stop the fight. Yeah, and you're also not protecting yourself at all times. The opponent can attack you. Yeah, but those body shots are starting to have an effect. In tight, Rio's trying to answer, but Lorenzano starting to really break him down. Good uppercut lands. One minute remains in round number six. So you see Rio's trying to use that activity, but Lorenzano's landed some good quality shots this round. And it may have started to affect Rios. Rios, 28 years old, his entire family in attendance here tonight. It has been written that he has the abilities to trouble a young fighter, maybe even spoil a young 10-0 fighter's perfect record. And you can see glimpses of why people say that about him. He's definitely a, a tough out, not an easy guy. He's very tough, he's very durable, he's in there. He's got an attitude about him that, he, that he's there to, to, to win at least rounds, if not the entire fight. But yeah, he's, he's definitely pushing Lorenzana here. And he likes that uppercut, Paulie. Yeah, he's got character. Um, you know, if you give him a chance to work, he, he does get to work. But I think Lorenzana is, uh, has started to affect him with those body shots uh, as well. Body shots are funny like that. They creep up on you. Otra vez. Tú sí lo lastimas, pero te quedas con dos golpes. Quiero más golpes, güey. Pego, pego y de lado y otra Take a look at that shot there from. Ah, so that was what. See, I missed that. I didn't see yeah. that it was low. I thought it was a good body shot. Turns out that that was a low blow. And there you see. <laughs> that means the ref wasn't having the five minutes either. No, <laughs> so, no, you know, walked away. No, no, we, we just give you a second break and you go right back and, and work. Yeah, I'm not going to give you a standing eight count, but <laughs> we're going to go right back to work. I'm also not going to give you the five minutes. Yeah, yeah. So the battle continues here in our co-main event of the evening. El Rey, Lazaro Lorenzano, just turned 24 years old. 28-year-old Alexis Rios, not a ton of fights. He has had some inactivity partly due to the pandemic where many were unable to fight. 28 years old, but turned professional in 2015. And again, trying to cut off the ring here early in round seven. He, he, he placed Lorenzana right on the ropes to open the round. Rios looking to defend his home turf. And also continues to try to force pressure on his opponent. Lorenzana employing a different tactic now, more of boxing and moving, looking to pot shot and keep keep his opponent following him and walking into shots. And now we're seeing those combinations. Ooh. Nice body shot, grips right back up with the same hand through the uppercut. Yeah, forcing Rios to go full defensive here. Give Rios credit though, man. He's, he's got some character, you know. He tries to tough through it. He's, not, he's got some blood on the face. He's been punished from Lorenzana. Lorenzana is uh, sad on the shots. He does sad on the shots well that he does land and that he does throw. Yeah, that blood from the nose is probably from that left hook to the body, left uppercut combination that split the guard of Rios. Those uppercuts, it doesn't take much. You get a hit under the nose, get that blood flowing. 
I see that nose is bothering him. Just over a minute now in round number seven. I'll tell you what, that nose will bother him more if Lorenzana threw a jab every once in a while. Yeah, that's one thing. If your nose is damaged and you keep hitting with jab, hit with jabs, that's the worst punch you want to get hit with. I'm not really a jabber, Lorenzana. He likes to use that left hand kind of to probe out there and stick it out there to measure, but he doesn't really like to snap it out as, that often. For a guy who likes to be on the outside, again, a bit like Canelo. Canelo also, a guy who likes to be on the outside, but doesn't really jab a lot. No. Rio's bringing the fight tonight, no question about it. But also, you know, we talk about Canelo style. There's been so many alliterations of, of the Canelo style over the years. He's developed a lot. And he's one of those guys who actually did take pieces from his opponents, really, as he, yeah. as he went on in his career. You know, his defense is much better now than it was when he was younger. Yeah, I remember the slipping and sliding against Danny Jacobs. Yep. You know, oh, good, 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 good shot. Lorenzana felt that. And a good right hand. Oh. Entertaining co-main event as we head to the eighth and final round. Real starting his money, man. Here we see Rios actually fighting hard in the center of the ring. Most of the rounds where he was having success, he was pinning Lorenzana against the ropes. There's that left hook that had Lorenzana. It looked like he was in trouble. And then there's another right hook, landed right on the money. Lorenzana got hit with some big shots at the end of that round. Rios really coming on strong to close round number seven. Eighth and final round as Lorenzano tries to remain unbeaten. White, red, and green for Lazaro Lorenzano, Alexis Rios in the white and silver. Both men coming off eight rounders that went the distance. Unanimous decision win for Lorenzano. Majority decision setback in September of last year for Alexis Rios. And again, Lorenzana just pins himself on the ropes. <laughs> Didn't even get pushed there. wasn't wasn't punched. There was no there was no aggression from Rios, and and Lorenzana just put himself with his back against the ropes. I think it's the worst one. Worst thing you can do is when you try so hard to imitate another fighter. It's always good to take uh, some qualities from fighters and you know mix them with your own style. You can never be 100% uh, another fighter. Whenever you see fighters trying to copycat down to the little details uh, another fighter, I don't know, it never works out for them. Got to no, take no. a little bit from a lot of it, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of fighters you can enjoy watching and studying and then learn from, but I mean, you just decide you're gonna be one guy and you're gonna try to mimic him in every single detail. It's, it's just not gonna work for you. Even Ali said that he, you know, he mimicked Sugar Ray Robinson to a degree and yeah. parts of his style. I, you know, we all do it. We've all done it. The greats have all done it. Yeah. But yeah, you can't mix it. You can't go one for one. You mix it when you personalize it. Become a very dangerous hybrid fighter, taking the best that you can utilize and that you can mimic from many great fighters. Under 90 seconds in what has turned out to be a very entertaining co-main event. And also, if you're Lauren Zahn, what is he, 24 years old? Oh, yeah, goodness. just turned 24, Paul. Yeah, if you don't get it by the time you're 24, you're not going to get it. Big slowdown here from Lauren Zahn. He's, he's having some trouble. Rios is really pouring it on. Rios swinging, looking for the finish here in the final 60 seconds of this fight. You also find out with the flaws Lauren Zahn has. He's, you know, I think he's going to get win this fight, but you find out with the flaws he has why he's still fighting guys four and two at, with a record of 10 and 0. Well, well, he has a record of 10 and 0. You know, you, you, you got to be careful, though, as you move him up the ladder. I think we're also seeing that that eight knockouts and 10 wins is, is a misnomer. Because mm -hmm. as much as he's landed the clean shots and tricky shots even on, on Rios, he's taken them all well, hasn't been hurt really by anything. Yeah, and also a lot of the shots Rios hasn't landed have not really been from any genius defensive move. Lorenzana made him real so limited that a lot of times he misses on his own. Mm -hmm. Good point. And he's a much smaller guy who, did, who doesn't have knockouts. He's got one knockout in his, yep. in his four wins. 
and he's been able to enforce his will physically. Oh, good There's counter there. Final him. seconds of this fight. Big swing and a miss from Alexis Rios. <laughs> That's what I mean about Rios. Sometimes he just flat out misses. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not even one down, it's making a miss. They go the distance. It is now in the hands of the judges in our co main event of the evening. We got the eighth round coming up now. Oh, uh, there you go. Oh, never mind. We, got <laughs> we, this, got we might have a draw then because <laughs> Rios is really coming on. Yeah, yeah I got a 4 3 right now for a long time. <laughs> like I said, they are fighting to the finish of round seven. Eighth round to come. <laughs> So if you're Rios, are you feeling confident going into these final three minutes, Chris? No, you cannot be confident in this situation. You've got to go for broke here. If, you're, if I'm Rios, I'm throwing everything at this guy right now. He hasn't really been able to hurt you. He seemed to be slowing down at the end of the seventh round. And the chances of him hurting you now are, are, are slim, so I, I would go for it. So here is the eighth and final round. 10-0, Lazaro Lorenzana, 4-2-1, Alexis Rios, white and silver for Rios, white, red, and green for the unbeaten fighter from San Diego. Wondering if Lorenzana kind of took his foot off the gas last round to save it for this round. Yeah, he's got a good start so far, let's see. Just missed with that right hand. Uppercut lands for Rios. Rios keeping those hands busy here. Answered by Lorenzano. Nice left. I don't mind. I, would, I don't mind the way Rios fights, man. I, I, I'm, I'm enjoying it. He's like you said. He's got a lot of a lot of character and, and, and attitude to him. Um, he's he's going to test a lot of a lot of young fighters out there. I don't know, man. I, I also I think he just exposes Lorenzana. Rios is durable, but he's shown no ability to understand how to cut the to cut the distance off. You know, he knows how to cut the ring when he's got Lorenzana against the ropes, but cl closing the gap, he doesn't use a jab either. He just walks in. So if you got a if he fights a guy who just simply uses a jab, he, he wouldn't win a second of the fight. But Lorenzana's allowed him in, and when he's allowed him in, he's been able to stay active. Ninety seconds. I just meant that I like his attitude. He's going for it. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I certainly I think, limited. I but. think I think also he's been able to gain confidence in, in, in this fight. You know, uh, when you're seeing it, you're able to have some success. It does well for you. Although now Lorenzana trying to close it out a little stronger. And some of these shots on Lorenzana Atlantic are as, were as clean as could be. And you know, that, you talk about the confidence built up from from Rios. I mean, he got hit with these clean shots. Like, God, oh, this guy's not hurting me. I can. I can go for broke. I can go out there and take some shots. Yeah, and that's the uh, that's the thing uh, about it. First of all, you know, as you said last round, champ, it's, it's a misnomer about his uh, Lorenzana's power. And then second of all, you know, Rio's never been stopped, so you know he, he's, he's he's confident in his chin. And, and once he tasted the power of Lorenzana, realized he could take it, he became more confident in that and, and wanted to you know, get on the inside. He didn't mind being on the inside trying to win these rounds. You know, and Lorenzana, from what I've seen on his tape, he seemed to be the slow starter. I think Rios would have been better advised to start faster because yeah. he really didn't start till round four. And he's had a good second half of the fight. 20 seconds remain in the eighth and final round. A big flurry by Lorenzano. Final 10 seconds. They're going to swing to the finish. Oh. Rios and Lorenzano. In our co-main event of the evening, they go the distance. They left it in there at least, you know. They worked, especially the last couple of rounds. So for the second straight fight, a veteran has forced the 24-year-old now, as of May 1st, to go the full eight rounds. 
tonight. His name is Alexis Rios. Three fights, they have all gone the distance. Judges getting set to render their decision. Cody Jalisco, our venue tonight. Wednesday night fights here on Pro Box TV. Coming up next, our main event of the evening, another American unbeaten, hoping to stay unbeaten in his professional career. He is 19-year-old Jonathan Lopez, fighting out of Orlando, Florida, 10-0 with seven finishes. His opponent, 25-year-old Osvaldo Nunez. That is our main event still to come, scheduled for 10 rounds. Pick it up at round three from our co-main event, guys. Yeah, it's a good action fight, you know, Lorenzana, Started strong early on. Rios didn't really do a whole lot, but really started to dig in in round number four. And a fight broke out in the middle of this fight. And we had a nice exchanges back and forth. Rios showing a lot of character, a lot of a lot of aggression, a lot of attitude. And you know, Lorenzana picking his spots, but also showing that perhaps that that eight KOs in ten fights is 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 not the reality of the power that he brings to the table. Well, so you brought up a good point, champ. You know, it, what would have happened if Rios decided to start a little earlier in the fight, right? For the first three rounds, he kind of let Lorenzano walk around and, and dictate the pace whenever he wanted to fight. But once he decided, you know what, I'm going to go right to him and, and start to make him fight, it became a very even fight. Yeah, it's very, I mean, I had it very close. I have Lorenzano pulling it out, basically. But, I mean, yeah, if, if Rios had started a round earlier or, or, or two rounds earlier, yeah. this, this fight could be going the other way. Yeah, I've got it five rounds to three, 77, 75 for Lorenzano. But I've Same. also got Rios giving away the first three rounds with, with barely trying. So imagine he would have actually started doing from round one what he started doing in round four. The official decision is in. Has Lorenzano remained unbeaten? Here is Pablo Flores. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this bout has gone the distance of eight rounds, and now we will go to the judges' scorecards. Damas y caballeros, este combate se ha ido a la distancia de ocho rounds, por lo tanto tendremos la decisión de los jueces. El juez, Judge Simón Contreras, he scores it 79 to 73, 79 a 73, in favor, a favor de Rios. Rafael Cortés scores it 77 to 75, 77 a 75, in favor, a favor de Lorenzana. And Cesar Flores had the scores of 77 to 75, 77 a 75. For your winner, by the way, of split decision. Su vencedor por la vía de la decisión dividida. And still undefeated, aún invicto. San Diego, California, y Tijuana, Baja California. Lázaro, el rey Lorenzana. Split decision victory for Lorenzana. So much to your guys' point, the judges saw the effectiveness in the fact that Rios brought the fight. Yeah, uh, two of the judges saw it like me and Chris saw it, 77-75 for Lorenzana. One judge had seven out of eight rounds for Rios. That's kind of interesting, you know, but, but it does go back to showing you where if Rios would have actually started the fight earlier, might have pulled this out. And that's the key against Lorenzano is come out fast and understand what you're up against. And, and maybe, Chris, it was much like you guys talked about. It took Rios a couple of rounds to realize that the power 
that Lazaro had was not going to affect him. Yeah, he, he kind of had to realize that, listen, I belong here. I, I can actually win this right. fight if I push the action. And, and, you know, I don't think this guy has anything that I, I can't deal with. And really, the fight started in round number four when he realized that that, that fact. Yeah, and that's the thing. When you're 4-2, a lot of times you already have that opponent mindset. He came out with the opponent mindset and then realized uh, after a few rounds that maybe he could win this fight. If he had come out without that opponent mindset, he, he would have realized a lot sooner that Lorenzana is a, probably an overinflated record. And Lorenzana should know, Paulie, that up against a guy, even though his fights are limited, they were limited for personal reasons, they were limited because of the pandemic, the experience in being four years older definitely was showcased by Rios once he began to really fight. Yeah, yeah, I mean, once he began the fight, once he just decided that, you know, this guy's not that good, I can actually take it to him. And uh, that's pretty much when it became competitive. Because if, if I've got it 5-3 and I gave, and Rios was basically, basically just gave away the first three rounds, that means if Rios would have done what he was doing earlier, he probably wins this fight or at least in the very least gets a draw. And we picked up our highlights in round three. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's where the fight really started, like I said. But listen, that's why you have to look past the numbers. When you look at a guy's record like that and you're like, ah, well, on paper, this is, this is a blowout. You got this guy who's got knockouts right. and you got this other guy who's got a, a, a sloppy record. But if you look past the numbers, we knew that coming in. Rios had fought the much better opposition. Uh, he was a crafty kind of cagey guy and he's got a lot of attitude and, and he's got a good chin and he made it a fight. No reason not to be proud of his performance tonight. Still, Lorenzana remains unbeaten in our co-main event of the evening. Main event still to come in two weeks from tonight. We bring you fights live from our world headquarters here in Tampa. It's May 17th in the main event, and he is ultra entertaining. He has a lot of fun. Otar Aranosian, 12 and 0 as a professional, looks to make it two in a row on Pro Box Plus. 7-0, 2020 Haitian Olympian Daryl Blasfell Saint. Heavy-handed 6-0, Najee Lopez. And former Team USA boxing member 8-0, Marcus Valle. All appear in separate bouts to continue their assault on their respective divisions. Two weeks from tonight, join us for all the action. That is Wednesday, May 17th, right here on Pro Box TV. Back to Mexico at the end of the month, mid-month, June 14th. Back at our world headquarters, back across the border, and then July, another night of fights live from our world headquarters. That comes your way Wednesday, July 12th. Tonight, we are in Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, where the one, the only, Canelo Alvarez will fight in his hometown for the first time in nearly 12 years on Saturday night. But tonight is Wednesday, which means it belongs to Pro Box TV. And tonight we come to you from Code Jalisco in a main event that should be ultra entertaining. A main event that is different than the one originally scheduled due to some unfortunate incidents outside the ring. But still, Jonathan Lopez at 19 years old, Osvaldo Nunez at 25 years old are set to put on a show in a 10 round lightweight matchup. Mike Goldberg, former world champion, Chris Algieri, the magic man, the former two-time world champion, Paulie Malinaji. Talk about when you met Jonathan Lopez, what you thought about him initially, and how he has grown in your mind since, Chris. Yeah, actually, I spoke to his father through Instagram. We live in a world where we can, we can be contacted at any time. And, you know, he's a super talented kid. He's got a great attitude. You know, we, we had him in the fighter meetings the other day. I mean... He's 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 has a star quality about him, you know, and and on top of that, he can fight. You yeah, know, I've seen yeah. him. I've seen him train. I've seen him fight. Um, he he's a he's a very talented kid with a high ceiling. Like I said at the open. And Jonathan Lopez is a guy who has seeked out others to help him advance. And at 19 years old, the one thing we just learned in the co-main event. He shouldn't overlook Osvaldo Nunez despite the 5-4 and four record. No, you don't want to overlook any opponents early in your career because it's not just about winning. It's also about making that impression. You're, a lot of prospects are undefeated, but a lot of those same prospects don't get to that next level. They don't make that cut to that world-class level. So you want to start to separate yourself as much as possible, not just by winning and blowing up your record, but also by looking more impressive than your fellow prospects because you, got, you need, in order to get to that next level, you need to make the people that count talk about you and you need, need for them to take notice. And on a big fight week, like you talked about at the very top of the show, Paulie, there are many more eyes dialed into 
all the fights tonight, but especially a 19-year-old who looks like he could really become something special. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's exactly the eyes you kind of want to start to take notice of you. They're all in town uh, this week in Guadalajara, so I'm sure some of them will probably be present at this fight. And, and if you start to make that kind of impression, you make people talk. And he is looking to do the talking tonight. La Roca, Jonathan Lopez, born in Pennsylvania, but fighting out of Orlando, Florida, seems to find his way to Mexico and to Guadalajara for a lot of his fights, Chris. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's young, so it, it, it's, uh, it's easier to get those fights down there than it is in his coming stateside. So it's good that he's been world-traveled. He's been able to, to leave the States and get these fights, have this experience, and especially on a weekend like this. Hey, sometimes the main event falling out can be the best thing that could happen to a young fighter. Keys to victory for Jonathan Lopez. Keys to him remaining unbeaten. Yeah, so use that jab and slow the pace and keep the distance. He's a very smart fighter. He likes to counter from the outside. He fights really well on long and middle distance. Next, make him miss, make him pay. His, his opponent is very aggressive, likes to throw looping shots on the outside, but kind of is in the wrong distance. So when he does that, Lopez is going to have opportunities to counter him. Then lastly, attack the body with both hands. L Lopez actually switches sides very effectively. He can punch with the right hand and the left hand, and he's a pretty good body puncher. I've seen him knock guys out to the body as well. So it would be good to invest in the body early. And his aunt was a Golden Gloves champion in the state of Pennsylvania. His opponent is Osvaldo Nunez. His nickname means dog. Now, before, Polly, you talked about that being a bad nickname. Now he's the dog. He wants to bring the fight. What are his keys to victory? Well, he's got to be first, first and foremost. You know, he's not going to be able to match Lopez's ring IQ and, and skill set. Uh, you know, uh, Lopez comes with that amateur pedigree and so on and so forth. So you want to be first and maybe put that pressure on him by doing that. Don't reach. You know, don't give uh, Lopez the opportunity to counterpunch you or to make you pay for those kind of things. You know, uh, Nunez had a tendency to throw a looping shots from too far away, and that leaves the opportunity for guys like Lopez to counter. Close the distance. You know, he, he's got an opponent like Lopez who likes to set up power shots from the outside. Don't give him a chance to think. Close that distance and be first. Our tail of the tape for this, our main event of the evening. Ten rounds in the lightweight division. 19-year-old Jonathan Lopez against 25-year-old Osvaldo Nunez. Everything else on our tail of the tape is virtually identical. They are scheduled for 10. I will tell you that Jonathan Lopez is on a five-fight knockout streak and would love to extend that to six tonight. With the introductions, once again, Pablo Flores. It's time for boxing, and it's time to rock and roll. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of round schedule in the super featherweight division. Damas y caballeros, este es el combate estelar de esta noche. Pactado a 10 asaltos en la categoría de los pesos super pluma. It is presented by, presentado ustedes por clase y talento de Eddie Reynoso. No boxing, no life. Y Canelo Promotions. Esto es Wednesday Night Fights on Pro Box TV. Your three judges go on this bout and ringside. Sus tres jueces. Cesar Flores, Simón Contreras y Rafael Cortés. Your referee at the sound of the bell. Su referee para este combate, Manuel Rivera. Ahora bien, amigos aficionados que nos siguen a través de la señal de Pro Box TV. Estamos en vivo desde el Domo Alcalde, desde la tierra del mariachi y el tequila. La perla tapatía, Guadalajara, Jalisco, México. Ajusten su cinturón. Entries into your first. The fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears the black trunks with red and white trim. He officially weighs in 130 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul. Pantanos un color negro con rojo y blanco. Con un peso de 130 libras. And now nine pro bouts. He stands with a record. Five victories, four defeats. Cuenta con un record de cinco victorias por cuatro derrotas. De Morelia, Michoacán. Osvaldo Núñez. 
and his opponent across the ring standing in the red corner wearing the white trunks with black and green trim officially weighs in the limit of 130 pounds y su rival en la esquina roja pantalón sin color blanco con negro y verde con un peso de 130 libras and 10 pro bouts he stands perfect 10 victories, no defeats, and seven of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de 10 victorias, cero derrotas, y siete de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. Originally from Orlando, Florida, USA, and representing, representando Bayamón, la isla del encanto, Puerto Rico, Jonathan La Roca. Now with the final instructions, con las indicaciones finales, su referee in turno, Manuel Rivera. Ten rounds, diez asaltos. Escuchen bien, trate de dar una pelea limpia. Mucho cuidado con la cabeza, los golpes en la nuca y los golpes abajo de la cintura. Si alguno se va a la lona, el otro se va a la esquina neutral para poder contar. Dese la mano y que gane el mejor. Set for our main event of the evening, Jonathan Lopez putting his unbeaten record on the line against Osvaldo Nunez. Oh. Scheduled for 10 rounds. Here we go. It's time to fight. Lopez in the southpaw stance, white and neon green trunks, black and red trunks for Osvaldo Nunez. He comes out throwing the straightest punches we've seen all night. Right off the first two shots. Looking to set up that big left hand. Five fight knockout streak for Lopez. Yeah, you mentioned the, the jab, Champ Lopez. He's, he likes to fight from the outside. He sets things up. He's very methodical. He sets traps right there. He's fainting. His first faint we've seen tonight as well. Um, <laughs> Champ's upstairs, Champ's downstairs. If, if Lopez is the quality fighter we've been talking about, we're going to see a lot of things from him tonight that we haven't seen in the, any of the a previous lot of, fights. A lot of firsts for the night. <laughs> he comes in to town ready to put on a show, then all of a sudden becomes the main event and wants to steal the show and be the best fighter of the night as he looks to take out the 25-year-old. The good news for for Lopez trying to be the best fight of the night is he doesn't have to try that hard, Paul. But, you know, <laughs> I, kn I knew I had set Paulie up, Chris. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Now let's see if he can impress us as far as comparing him to all the prospects that we know and see in the sport of boxing. Yeah, but I will say a lot of times when a, when, a, when a main event falls out, you have someone step up and they don't deserve that spot. But you know, Lopez already, we're seeing that he's a class fighter. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a, a appropriate main event. You know what, when, when, when you have eyes for the sport, you know, you can kind of tell right off right off the bat if you're looking at it. It doesn't take you long to be able to understand if, if somebody is, if has something that you there that's worth watching or not. And even uh, in less than two minutes, you can tell Lopez has something in his style that's worth watching. You can kind of tell there's a difference between him and the other prospect we've seen tonight. Part of that is the fact that he, I don't think he's missed a punch yet. He has landed jabs that have been knocking his opponent's head way back picking his spots, left hands down low, mixing things up, keeping his eyes open to it. I always see when you see these, these high-level amateurs, you see the way they use their eyes, their vision. They see everything in the ring, and they're analyzing and collecting data. Yeah, and, and, and that's exactly right, Jim. You know, he's collecting data, and he's, he's using it to kind of change looks, uh, change target. Uh, when he's slipping punches, he's doing it uh, very, very subtly uh, while, setting, while still continuing to set the trap. Um, a lot of the punches that missed earlier in the fight tonight were missing on accident. They were, I don't know if they were really the cause of, of defensive moves by the uh, by the by the prospects but while Lopez not only makes you miss he makes you pay and he, he knows how to also you know, set you up and put you in positions to set to you know lead all but one of his professional fights have been here in Mexico this is the fourth time Lopez has fought in Guadalajara Temple. good left hand uh, a few seconds before the bell on the part of Lopez. Try to follow it up with a straight left at the bell. But a uh, good round, good opening round yeah, you for, don't for Lopez. How's your hands? How's everything? Yeah, though, you don't want to overreach, you know? I got you. Give me. Yeah. You know, don't, don't, don't be too, too jumping. Just touch, you know? Watch what he does. Keep this hand tight. Walk to this side, to this side, you know? It's coming. Make him go like this, you know? 
doing a Macy, you just take a time. You don't want to be too far, you know what I'm saying, reach in. Yeah, just feints, get a little closer, you know, keep your hands up. Here we see some of the work from that opening round, the left hand just a little bit short, but that jab landed quite well. It actually backed up uh, Nunez so much that he missed the left hand, but you can tell that Lopez is, is still collecting data, processing the information of what's going on out there and setting things up. His opponent didn't do a whole lot in that round, so probably still gonna take him a little longer to figure him out. Distinguished amateur career for Jonathan Lopez, won the WBC Youth World Featherweight title at 126 pounds. That was vacant back in December of 2021. After winning the title, he moved to 130. Tonight he fights as a lightweight at 135, although he weighed in at 131 and a half pounds. Straight punches, and, and much like Paulie said, and I know I threw a softball, Chris, when I said he could be the top fighter of the night, but the straight punches are very evident coming from Lopez. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, got, a, he's got a very sharp jab that he's landing at a high percentage. Now he's starting to mix up his punches a little bit, vary them, throwing some hooks, throwing some straight left hands as well. But everything is, is very precise, very thought, thoughtful, methodical in his approach. And as you're starting to collect that data, as Lopez is, you start to realize that the defensive moves that uh, his opponent Nunez makes, uh, they're, they're not defensive moves where he's able to really punch back. So you're gonna start to make him pay by putting him out of position, making him make those defensive moves, and then maybe making him pay on the third and fourth shot. Big swing and a miss there from Nunez. Midway point of round number two, Jonathan Lopez will turn 20 years old on May 20th. 10 rounds, or 10 bouts, 30 rounds, 70% finish rate. So he's averaging three rounds per fight. Oh, as he lands a nice left hand as Nunez was coming forward. Beautiful shot there. Nice straight left hand down the pipe, caught his opponent right on the chin. And you can tell from the stance of, of Lopez, he, he's obviously a boxer, but he's very set in his feet because he wants to land power punches. He's not just looking to score points. He wants to do damage. And very relaxed as well, Paul. He's very confident in his skill set. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he wants to take command of the ring. You can tell he has command of the ring in this fight. Uh, while Nunez is still trying to figure out how he's going to, you know, set up a, an organized attack. There's that snapping jab you guys talked about again. Nice check hook there. Puts his opponent down. And scores the knockdown here in round number two. And correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Goldie, but I, I believe Oscar Valdez used him in camp for Shakur Stevenson. Yes, yes. And, and you can see that in his style here, fighting from that southpaw position. He's got the straight left hand, he's using his jab, he's got that pullback defense. A lot of the, a lot of the uh, maneuvers that Shakur utilizes. At the and and both his parents are Puerto Rican, so he's a proud Puerto Rican. So although he seems to find Mexico as his fighting home, we do have the Puerto Rico versus Mexico matchup here in our main event of the evening. Good round number two for Lopez. Nunez will try to adjust and get some good advice in his corner. See that, that, that knock down there. Actually, that was a, the first right hook that was landed. And then there was the second one right there. Same setup. We started with a, a, a short straight left. And then uh, he sort of used that shot, that left hand, not really to land it, but just to cock his hip. See it again there. Just use it to kind of stick it out there so his his hip is cocked to load up on the right hook. And that's that was the harder shot there. Again. Just places it. Sets his hip for a, a, a whipping right hook, and he gets that knockdown. It was nice how he placed the first one to the head and then the second one to the body, not to make the same same move over tw uh, two times in a row. Yeah, yeah. The, that way, keep it deceptive. Round number three, Mike Goldberg, Chris Algieri, Pauli Malinaji, our main event of the evening from Cote Jalisco. 
where Canelo Alvarez will fight on Saturday and Jonathan Lopez looking to continue his knockout streak here tonight. Scored the knockdown in round number two. Yeah, he's starting to close the gap a little bit at a time on, on Nunez. He's starting to, you know, just get a little closer and make Nunez more and more uncomfortable. Tempo, tempo. So a few seconds ago, Nunez just throwing overhand rights while he's looking at the floor. Uh, so he's starting to run out of ideas as to how to get out of get out of danger. I don't know if he lost a mouthpiece here or if he's cut. Let's see. Yeah, I saw some blood. Definitely a puncher or a headbutt because with southpaw right hand there a lot of times. There could also be clashes of heads. I didn't see a headbutt, but that's a bad spot. And also Nunez flew in with his head uh, a few seconds ago as well. I mean, he, he throws very looping wide shots. So I, I mean, and then you got the orthodox southpaw matchup. And a lot of times the problem with guys that fall in is their head arrives before their fists. Mm -hmm. They lead with their head first, and now the referee's going to stop the fight here. Let's see if it's uh, now. Now it's going to be dependent if you call it from a punch or a headbutt, right? Because yeah. if it's from a headbutt, it's going to wind up being like a contest headbutt. headbutt. Yeah. That's interesting. The ref didn't bring him back to the doctor again. Ooh, that is yeah, well, nasty. That's a bad spot. It's long. The entire length of the eyebrow. We'll try to see exactly where and how it happened, but that is a bad spot below the eyebrow. Jagged, too. Yes. Yeah, not a clean cut. And if it's a headbutt, um, Nunez pretty much saved himself a guaranteed loss. Yeah. <laughs> Good for him. That's a bad a break, point. on the other hand, for yeah. Lopez, who was on his way to, you know, looking more and more impressive each round. And also, he had a guy in front of him that he could look really impressive against down the line as he, as he figured him out and dealt with the awkwardness. Yeah, when the cut is there, there's not many times the doctor will let it go on because that blood affects the vision. That cut is nasty. As you said, Chris, it's jagged. Yeah, bad spot, jagged. Let's see if there's a headbutt or if there's a punch. Let's see that. Oh, no, that's there's a punch. A punch yeah. That's a punch. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Beautiful punch. Oh, that nice been elbow there, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the slicing elbow, right, Chris? Might have been an elbow. But who fell into the elbow? I mean, uh, honestly. I mean, he landed three hard, clean, hard yeah. jab, a looping and shot that looked like it was right on the spot, and then a right slicing hook, and yeah. then it seemed like a little elbow when they jumped in. And the only reason the elbow is there is because Nunez is falling in with his head first. And Lopez does average three rounds per fight. Well, he got there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> One way or another. One way or another. I wonder what is, what is the official verdict, right? What do we know? I'm not not yet. But and, I, and I've learned from you guys not to nah, speak tell the official verdict before it comes out, especially in Mexico. I do feel like I saw the referee make some kind of gesture yeah. with the head, which would be unfortunate because it, that, that did look like it was from punches. Yeah, it, well, it wasn't a head either way. It was either no, an elbow, was either or, an elbow punch. or punches, right? Definitely wasn't. So the head. referee definitely didn't see it. Let's take another look at it, guys, and, and watch for the right hand as part of this combination. Look, that jab lands, that left hand hands, and the right hook. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's hard to see if that elbow did make any contact, but, I mean, he did land three clean yeah. shots right before that. Yeah, I think you got a bunch of choices you can take. Yeah. <laughs> and that was a slicing angle on that right hand by Lopez. Three punches definitely landed. One elbow might have landed. I'm, I'm going on punches. Yeah, yeah. It's the numbers thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to find out. Our main event comes to conclusion. We get set for Pablo Flores. He will make it official. And ladies and gentlemen, this toppage comes with a time of one minute and one second into the second round. Tenemos el tiempo oficial, un minuto con un segundo en el segundo asalto, declarando su vencedor por la vía del knockout técnico. The clinic winner by the way of TKO victory. Orlando, Florida, and Bayamón, Puerto Rico. Still undefeated. Jonathan La Roca. So there it is, it is a official, a TKO, six straight finishes for now 11-0. Jonathan 
Lopez, who from the very start impressed both of you guys. Yeah, I mean, Lopez obviously is a very classy fighter. His, his punch percentage was incredible. I mean, he didn't really miss a jab all night long. He had an awkward guy in front of him who was, who was as Paulie said, leading with his head and throwing looping shots. But, I mean, you could see the class of Jonathan Lopez really start to shine, even in, the, in only three rounds. Yeah, and you see the knockdown there in the previous round, the penultimate round there. And uh, Chris, you made a good point about how he set it up with the left hand to the stomach first and the left hand to the head or, or vice versa before using that hook. And this is the final exchange here. Um, good shot there. Oof. Big good shot. Yeah, that's a there's big the cut. cut. Yeah, good shot see. selection, honestly, on yeah. the part of uh, uh, Lopez. He sort of built up to this. You can see round by round, he was building up to it. He's getting a little closer. Uh, and, and as he got a little closer, his shot selection continued to have a chance to vary itself a little bit more. And he was able to start to see and get really honing on the timing. And that was one of the first times he actually threw combination punches. And that's that's how deadly those shots were. I mean, the, the precision was there. He took his time. He talked about his analyzation of, and his yep. data processing as he was going. And, you know, then when, when he got to the right position, which his corner was saying all night, get get closer, get closer, then let your hands go, followed, followed suit and got the job done. But, champ, that's also a good point. You know, it was one of the first combinations he threw, but you don't want to rush those combinations, right? So you want to make sure you're starting to close that gap a little bit more before you throw those combinations. And so you could see round by round, he got a little closer, maybe four four to six inches closer and four to six inches closer. But so by the time he got to that third round, he was putting more punches together because he was comfortable at that closer range. And, and obviously he made it work for him. Combined with how he had his feet and his balance underneath him all night yeah. long, you know, he's got Always the power, obviously, yes. that's going to do the damage. And he adjusted well with working from all different angles. That first knockdown was a punch that hit his opponent behind the ear, so the equilibrium goes all crazy. But the way his body moved in that last combination, guys, that cut his opponent, he was coming from different angles, showing that he's got a very good skill set at just 19. That's one of the points that, that you made, Paulie, about the defensive move, movements that Nunez were making. They were incorrect. He was putting himself in bad positions. And, and, and with um, Lopez, he was able to analyze, I see that, and was able to anticipate where he was going to be. And that, that, to me, shows high-level boxing IQ. Absolutely. And he did steal the show, Paulie, one that you said was – very easy to rob, but yeah, he did steal could, the shot. I mean, after the first minute that I watched <laughs> him, I knew grab he was watching the best prospect of the night. It, was, it wasn't a difficult choice tonight. Well, he showed himself worthy of being in our main event of the evening, and he's a young man who lives here in Orlando, not far from our world headquarters, but is going to Mexico constantly to fight. And, Chris, that's great experience because you're always on the road, and when you go against a Mexican, you're always the bad guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean the, the Mexican-Puerto Rican yes. you know, war you're has always been going enough on. Where exactly. you're from. But I mean, he went into the, the, you know, he went into the guy's backyard and we got that that win on the road. I think it's, it's great experience, and especially like we kept saying about Canelo weekend. So uh, yeah, all around good, good, a and, good, and uh, good alley. He's fought in Mexico a few times. He must have a connection there as well. So yeah. he's not he's not totally the stranger. He, he's there. only had one fight outside of Mexico. That was in his hometown of Orlando. So a referee must have known him too. I mean, he didn't let the fight go on at all yeah. when he saw the cut. He must have known, like, you know what, let, let's save this guy the beating and let's stop it right here. And the cut was bad enough to stop. Well, if the microscope was very tight with Canelo set to fight on Saturday, Jonathan Lopez got everybody's attention, Paulie. Yeah, absolutely. Short work, but smart work and really made the shots count and made the performance count. And he was balanced, as Paulie talked about, Chris. So all the punches that landed did their damage. Yeah, no, I, I liked everything I saw from top to bottom. But de definitely a, a, a high-class prospect and a, a good outing. So our first three fights go the distance. And our main event of the evening stays on course if you're Jonathan Lopez. Three rounds. He stays to his average, and he wins by TKO. So tonight, we came from Mexico in two nights or two weeks, pardon me, May 17th. We come live from our world headquarters, the Pro Box TV Event Center. Otar Aranosian in the main event, also on the card filled with unbeatens, Daryl Blasfell Singh. Heavy-handed 6-0, Najee Lopez, 8-0, Marcus Valle. All appear in different bouts and look to continue their winning ways on a Wednesday night, which is our tradition now, on your boxing channel. So join us for all the action Wednesday, May 17th, right here on Pro Box TV. We started in the lightweight division, and Cesar Ortiz was dominant and moves to 6 
and oh. Then a super bantamweight battle, which had its moments. Joseph Morales was game, but Oscar Hernandez gets his arm raised. Then, in our co-main event of the evening, one of the two 10-0 fighters from the U.S. moves to 11-0. That is Lazaro Lorenzano. And then in our main event of the evening, Lopez in the third round by TKO. For my partners, Chris Algieri and the magic man, Paulie Malinaji. Mike Goldberg saying so long. Until next time, we see you right back here on Pro Box TV.